And we are coming down in three, two, one. Welcome to Getting Sports with Drunk. I'm your host, Cupcake the Riddler, and I'm joined by... Mark Sheen Washington. <laughs> I'm the man of many names. The Mask Chris Massey. And I'm the Red Baron. <laughs> High energy. Yeah. Yeah. Nope. Like no it. crash today. Why? Because this is Getting Sports with Drunk's 100th show! Dun-dun-dun-dun! Two, almost two years. 93 locations. <laughs> 74 microphones. <laughs> Six, uh, I did the math, 6,475 beers drank. Oh, man. I went back and listened to the introduction uh, at the beginning and end of every show to figure out how many beers we drank. You really? Yeah. <laughs> it's about 6,000 in two years. There are a lot of shows where we did some damage. Oh, yeah. Especially shows at Maple. <laughs> yeah, Maple used to get a lot of Shows where I didn't have to go anywhere after. <laughs> Paul drank three Bourbon counties in one show. Yeah. <laughs> and at the time, we were doing our shows. Yeah. <laughs> we did an hour show, I drank two bourbon counties, then I drank one after, and then I pooped tar. <laughs> <laughs> For about a week. Oh. Yeah. We uh, started a lot in that it's funny. It's funny you talk about maple, because <laughs> I, I sent it to you guys, the, the picture I found <laughs> of us sitting in maple. Oh, yeah. We don't, we don't need to. <laughs> no. I will take that photo to the grave. Oh, uh, it's so funny. What you please. You may show Mass, because he hasn't seen it. But what I'll picture am I looking at? I'll, I'll show you guys during break. It's just the most unflattering picture of me that there is. <laughs> it's so and funny. And the best part is, is there's probably more of those. Because <laughs> that was something that kind of happened regularly for a while. Let's just say Paul got naked for no reason. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that, on the that picture. Yeah, <laughs> that picture. <laughs> but it well, was a panoramic let's one. Let's think, Kyle, you weren't there. I'm sorry. No, Kyle what? was there. He just wasn't in the picture. No, that was the night we went to... Um, it doesn't matter. Kyle's been there for it. But it's like coach. <laughs> that was when uh, we went to the Hop Dot. Me, you, Red Baron, and J Mart. When oh, the well, people me. started singing. Yeah. And then Kendall went oh, to the package store. I missed store. that. Down. Kendall Good went set. to the package store and bought everybody a 40. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I bought Jeff a banana nip. <laughs> you bought them for everybody. Not banana nips. Yeah. Huh. Oh, man. Cool. I was sad. Oh, yeah, because we sat with that, with that that lady and her hot daughter. Remember the hot mom and the hot yeah. daughter? Yeah, Kyle, you missed a g- I they gave hot. my love <laughs> to <laughs> They weren't hot. I, they were, I laughed. It was sarcasm for the listeners. They were... <laughs> I laughed so, so hard in that place when they started singing. Oh, my God. It, it was like a... Uh, like a, Not a sea shanty. What do they call it? Like a drinking ballad? Yeah. I, I wish I knew what they were saying, but I, I couldn't breathe. I was laughing so hard. Shut I was sad. The other guys. <laughs> I was sad. You were at work. What was I? Probably. Oh, probably. You were there at work or getting porked by somebody. <laughs> Could be both. <laughs> Do you guys serve pork at Burger King? Oh they had a pulled pork something, right? Did they, have a <laughs> they, also, they also had the, the BK rib. Yeah, we're getting that back. Real excited. <laughs> <laughs> Real excited. Oh, no. Nah. Like, oh, no. Nah. <laughs> oh, no. <nah. laughs> I, when I'm driving, I, I, I'm like all hyped up. Like, oh, no. Oh, no. I, I'm 15. I'm merged to the left lane, and I'm waving people on to get on. Oh, no. I'm a weird guy. I can picture it, too. <laughs> but, like, I'm picturing it on a tractor. Not <laughs> like a John Deere. Uh, toast. Toast of excellence. Souls. Mine is to Albert Pujols again. But this time, we're getting a 2,000 RBI. Awesome. My toast, I'm toasting uh, Kawhi Leonard. Having a great NBA playoffs. Playing well against the Bucks. Down 2-1. Yeah, well, he's playing well. <laughs> well, he didn't play well in the fourth quarter. Matt's his favorite team. Yes, that's true. Guy's huge Bucks fan. <laughs> no, Raptors. I know. I guess it was a shot for losing the Mass's team. Yeah. But Mass owes a shot for losing the series against the Phillies. Yeah. So do you, got, you guys can choose. Either so you both do a shot. Tickle fight. Or we both do shot. All right, all right, we'll do that later. It's the hundredth show. Do it now. It's the hundredth show. We have to do a hundred shots. Yeah. Wow. 
But anyway, oh, no. we start oh, now. No. So let's go. Pour them up. We'll do it later. Do do your do your toast. Yeah, who's your toast, excellent sir? Uh, my favorite player in football of all time, Chris Long. Wonderful eleven seasons. All the reason time? he's the reason I started watching football. Matt hasn't been watching football for a long time. No, he's going and, on like six and, years. And the reason I say that is of like regularly watching. My father-in-law <laughs> gave me his old Chris Long jersey when he switched numbers. I didn't watch football then. I not really, at least. So I went looked him up and I was like, all right, favorite player. All right. And that was that. I'm in. And then you abandoned the team when they moved. <laughs> Went to the Patriots. He got, he got cut. <laughs> yeah. Won but a Super Bowl. My, Won two Super Bowls. My toast of excellence is to Kyle Long <laughs> for having an awesome brother who just retired after 11 seasons. <laughs> yeah. Shout out Howie. <laughs> Not Jake Long. Fuck him. Yeah, he was bad. He wasn't bad. He was a dolphin. He was also a ram. He was. That's right. They were long on both sides of the line. But Dolphins suck. Ram sucks when Long was on that team, too. So, so it's funny you say that, because uh, my toast to excellence is the throwback jerseys. Damn right. The, Dol- the Dolphins are going to be wearing their 2003 to like 06 throwback jerseys uh, yeah, this season. So they're going to be wearing their... What? The orange? No, no the, the white ones. They're going to be ones. wearing their 2003 jerseys? The, the, no. You said 2003. I admit. That's 2003. That. <laughs> 2003. So like they had a, a period of time where they wore like a, a full white like, get up with the, the old school uh, dolphin helmet. They should bring back the old school dolphin helmet. They should. They should bring back the orange. I don't know what the fuck it is with Florida and fish logos, but, like, they had two good ones and they ruined them. These are the Speaking of the they good will one, be wearing. I am wearing it. Big fan. Big fan of those. Absolutely. So, and it's only appropriate because I always get so much shit for saying throwback jerseys. <laughs> it's just, like, your go-to. Yeah. I like them. Fitting for the 100th episode. Right. I like what I like. Stupid. Hey, whatever. Mine's the Mitch Hanniger. <laughs> He's on a 38-game hitting streak. Jesus Christ. Is he really? In uh, the show. Yeah, yeah not really. <laughs> I was going to say, wow, how have I not heard about that? <laughs> He's, a, a quiet 38-game hitting in streak. In real life, he's batting like 247. In the show, he's batting 410. With like four home runs. A lot of singles and doubles. No, mine is to uh, Carlos Rodon. For having successful Tommy John surgery. Which means he's going to be really good next year. <laughs> so is Michael Copage. We're still going to win 50 games. <laughs> hey, listen. We're live on Facebook right now. Is YouTube going, Kevin? And YouTube is going, too. Wow. Thought he shut that right at Kendall. <laughs> <laughs> we're here popping bottles. <laughs> popping big bottles. <laughs> and now we're here. big bottles. Yo, Fort Wayne, <laughs> Indiana. <laughs> oh, man. Have you guys seen a couple, a couple non-sport related things real quick? Uh, so, first, have you guys ever seen, like, a person, like, say you're driving your car, and they're, like, walking down the street, or just in the mall, Singing or whatever, I did it. but you, you see a person, oh, and you're that. just like, there's no way that per that's a real person. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. They have to be on the way here today. There was somebody walking down the street, I mean, we're talking, like, Carlito's Way Afro, like, the, the Jew guy there, which, forget his name. Kleinfeld. Yeah, Kendall. Um, <laughs> and, but he's got, so, that Afro, baggy... Pink shirt, no pants, <laughs> no pants, high top sneakers, turns around, it is a toothless Asian woman smoking a cigar. No way, that's a real person. <laughs> Going to church. <laughs> yeah, there's no, way. no, she walked into a car wash. <laughs> it's shower time. Uh. <laughs> um, and then the other thing was, oh, I forget, what did I say that prompted this? Oh, have you guys seen those memes that have been going around lately where it was like the... I don't know, like, or, like, felt cute, and yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Why delete this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. But, like, they've been Might doing the delete this later? Yeah. Oh, it was, like, it was, <laughs> it was the walrus. It was the fucking videos, the, uh, the guy in the woods. Oh, uh, the, 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 the chicken sandwich and yeah, the waffle the, fries. It was, a, it was the side profile of him, and it was, like, felt cute. I don't know. Might get some waffle fries <laughs> later. <laughs> Oh, I can't remember the name of those. Uh, they know, there's a whole bunch of them, too. Like, yeah. when we were, like, middle school, those were really popular. So I told her, sit down. But over three movies. He calls her a bitch a lot. <laughs> three movies. Dr. Zhivago. <laughs> Titanic. <laughs> so ridiculous. But thank you, Pete's tuning in. You know, shouted us out. So actually, it's uh, PPRN tomorrow. It's uh, nine years, I believe. Wow. Nine years of PPRN. So a big shout out to them. It's funny how they're kind of uh, syncing up, syncing up like that. 
It's a it's fate. It's fate. Shut up. All right, whatever. Souls. It's gonna happen every year. I don't really like you. Well, uh, I don't like you either. That's fine. Good. No wonder. You know, Kyle, if I had a Marlin's hat like that, we'd be the same person. You got you got a spare? Yeah, right here. Right. Do you have a spare? There we go. For the people <laughs> watching, there we go. Oh, yeah. Perfect. Can I see your glasses good. now? Yeah. Wait, so you look different now. I don't understand. We, we, like a second ago, we were the same, but all right, I'll just give you that back right. now. Well, I'm passing out. Can I have your glasses, though? Rebecca? <laughs> so, Could you please come grab yours and Kendall's? When one, we were, one at a time, if you prefer. When we were planning this, we were like, yeah, we should do, we should do champagne. And the, the Riddler and the Mass both delivered. <laughs> Well, Matt thought we were all bringing our own bottle. Which, you know, I can't fault him because that's something we would do. It would be <laughs> bring your own champagne night at GSWD. <laughs> BYOC. Yeah. Hold on, Rebecca's doing two. All right, well, don't paint it over the board, whatever you do. Take, take the long way home. Super Tramp. <laughs> 1975. She's got a wedgie going on. She can't pick it right now. She can't pick it, but she's got a pretty good wedgie going on. Everyone look at it. Everyone look at the wedge. She, she, Kyle, go she ahead can't do anything that. about it. <laughs> so get in there with your fingers. Like, she almost like pushed the chair back a little bit farther, so she almost fell. All right. So, gentlemen and lady. So do I 100 this? episodes. Do I chug <laughs> To 100 episodes. Here, here. Here, here. Yep. Watch him. That's good. This is a lot fancier than we deserve on this show. I also chugged mine. It's my product. I also chugged mine. Let's see who's got the... What's up, Andrew? Hey, Andrew. Andrew, Andrew Whitworth? Nope. So, oh, Rob Vaughn, what's guy. up? So, can you stand up a second and give, like, what's the, uh, the Great Gatsby scene, you know, the, the, the still image of oh. the champagne glass up? <laughs> Where's like, kind of like this? <laughs> yeah, just like that. <laughs> Kyle, no? No, no. I don't know what you're talking nah, about. Nah, it's all right. The moment's passed. Um... Yeah, uh, very exciting. Uh, real quick, around the horns. What? A, not around the horns, but you know what I mean. Starting lineup. What are you drinking, Souls? Uh, wrench. <laughs> <laughs> nah, wrench uh, from Industrial Arch Brewing Company, based in. Uh, give me a couple seconds here. Far, far away, and I'm laying down under. So Australia? I don't know. It's not here. It's on there. Yeah, I'm not reading the, the fine print. Machine washable. I have from Lord Hobo Brewing. Ugh. I knew Paul was going to say that. <laughs> this was uh, glorious. It is. Oh. <laughs> Cour- courtesy the, of my brother that's Tyler. The, that's the second worst one. Boom sauce is the worst. It's grapefruit. Ugh. Ugh. Mass, Chris Massey. All like right, so you said uh, make hey, sure Rob. it's something good. I, I threw back to high school the thing that I drank the entire time. Hey, fancy. Wow. You drank this in high school? Oh, Ooh. yeah. A friend of mine came up with it. It's... Arnold Palmer and Coconut Bay, or a co- pair of Bay Coconut Rum. <laughs> he called it a Hey Arnold while we were in high school. A hey Arnold? Why did he call it that? Arnold Palmer. Hey Arnold, I don't know. Alright, I, I get it, but it's pretty lazy. Yeah. <laughs> You're like the laziest person. Yeah, fair. Fair enough. What would you prefer to call it, the Arnold Parrot? Maybe. I kind of like that. No. You no. With a flying Arnold, or? No, no that's stupid. That's worse. Sounds like, like a, a sex position. <laughs> you, gotta, you gotta put your head in the shape of a football yeah. uh, Alright uh, Hey you guys uh, The Red Baron and I will be continuing the sparkling yes. uh, Sparkling theme As we're drinking the champagne of beers I will need one Do you uh, have I don't have one now no, heads up. Oh no <laughs> I'm, I'm probably gonna end up getting in on that <laughs> Oh Whoa. look at that How I will do good for high <laughs> Well, I know this isn't going to last three hours, <laughs> and I will not be joining you guys in that. I absolutely will by the end of the night. So, as you say that, you're going to have one. Yeah, probably now. Well, I'm, so, I'm Mark, that was supposed to keep going to Kendall. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you're good on beer right now. Yeah, I am. Sorry. Uh, so, we kind of went up. We kind of been bass backwards here, so I wanted to pop the champagne to the toast, so you guys can just kind of open these whenever nice. you want, I guess. Unless, hold on, toast to the 100th show, but we got to wait for Rebecca to give Kendall his beer. Yeah. Come on. It's great that she's paying attention over there. Not She's wearing. distracted Thank by her you. own body. <laughs> can, I, can I crack my beer now? To, yeah. to the 100th show. To the 100th show. Now that we've effectively have wasted a half hour of our 100th <laughs> show. So uh, let's do some housekeeping. We've got a lot of stuff to talk about. Um, Souls. Sup? Hey, Matt. I don't think we 
Did you guys talk NBA last week at all? Very quickly. Uh, yeah, I, we, I jumped in to touch on it. We caught up on what was going on there. And we, we gave predictions for for this series, where we thought everything was going to land. So, 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 let, let, so, let me get your input on the NBA playoffs thus far. It's it's not exciting. <laughs> I don't know. It's weird. You can never like the matchup that everybody wanted to see it isn't going to happen. You're going to get the Bucks and the Warriors, two teams that everybody thought would get in. So, so I have a question then: mm. is it is it been more entertaining without LeBron? Yeah, because I I think so. I mean, it, it's just been a new headlines, I guess. Well, I mean, the Warriors are the Warriors, the Warriors, but but see, LeBron not being in it and LeBron getting bounced. Before the finals, kind of has the same impact on it for me. Because if LeBron made the if LeBron made the playoffs, he's, the, the Lakers still weren't going to beat the Warriors. No, they, yeah. even if they went all the way to the Western Conference Finals, they weren't beating the Warriors in seven. No. So they still would have got bounced. So it just would have been the mini LeBron show. Like it, it would have been just as. Has LeBron ever been swept in a series? In the, yeah, in the LeBron, I think his first playoff series against the Spurs, right when he was a Cav. He got yeah, swept. they they were up, man. In in, in the finals. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I was going to say, that, that would, to me would be impactful, but it's already happened. So Did they get swept last year? Hey, Michelle. No. They won a game? Yeah. They lost 4-1? to one. I mean, LeBron won game that game, but it is what it is. <laughs> I don't know. It's been interesting that LeBron hasn't been in, so it's like fresh, fresh headlines. You know, letting guys like Giannis and, you know, Kawhi's making waves. It's, it's been interesting on, for me, anyway. Yeah, it's just paving the way for Kawhi to leave Toronto. Matt and I were talking kind of last week uh, about kind of like the, the KD situation. Kind of we were determining what, you know, if, if he does leave or, or when that team, you know, breaks up or whatever, um, kind of what we would hope would, would be. Um, and I, I thought that he's going, he's going for money regardless, you know, whatever the situation. Well, he's got nothing left to prove. Well, right, right. Um, but I guess what I was posing was like, would he go to – Another team in the West to try to, to to battle it out and see if he could beat beat the the Warriors. Now, I don't think so. I mean, I guess it depends what happens with the rest of that team, but I think teams are looking at the East as more wide open than the West. Well, I guess so. Would would you buy into like you know let's let's like a hypothetical situation? Durant's like, okay, hey, so I won my championship. Now let's see if I could beat the team that I won them with. Is there anything that's exciting to you about that, or not? Not really. I think he'd want to beat him in the finals. I think it depends on what team he gets signed for. So let's let's exclude Houston, because we'll, 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 let's just say for argument's sake, Houston's too stacked. What what would be uh, just for for argument's sake? Uh, what what team besides Houston would argument. be? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> like you mean just in the West? Yeah, What's up, CJ. A, a team in the West, Oklahoma City, to go back to OKC and and finish the job. Yeah, Portland. I feel like I could see him going to Portland. Pels. I could also see him going to Utah. Pels. No. Pels, Kyle. Pels. Come on, I could Kyle. Say Utah though, because in Utah he would he would in Utah. Hey, Maddie. And in Denver, he would automatically still be the number one. The, Portland, he wouldn't be the number one. What's up, he'd still, CJ? He'd still have to fight for limelight with Dame. But even though Donovan Mitchell is really good and Jokic is really good. Kevin Durant would still be the, the guaranteed hands on number one on that team, without a doubt. Yeah. He'd be the number one option. So if that's the case, then the Clippers. They have a lot of money to spend. They prove they can somewhat play without a star. You add someone like Kevin Durant, they're back up to a three four seed. I think with like a, I think with the league being the way it is with like these inflated salary numbers, I think that they should do away with max contracts. I think that people should just bid for because there's not, there's no, there's no max contract in the NFL. Yeah, and you know, like it's, it's just as inflated number wise. I, I think it'd be like interesting to see like a, an actual bidding war going because at the end of the day, say it's the Clippers, the Celtics. Uh, I mean, the, the the Clippers, the Knicks, and I don't know Oklahoma. I don't know. Let's say there's five teams, but at the end of the day, they all can only pitch the same number. They can only go to. <laughs> they can only reach a certain ceiling. So yeah. after that, it becomes, like, player preference. And, like, I would like to see more, like, okay, what if the Clippers offered him $45 million a year and the Knicks offered him $55 million a year? But he chose the Clippers. What does that say? 
I mean, he's not, it's not just about the money. I mean, he's still making a boatload of money, but it's not just about the money at that point. You know what I'm yeah. saying? So it'd be interesting to see. Or he'd go to Milwaukee, and that would be a, uh, not a fun team to play. It would be pretty insane. But. Pills. <laughs> Honestly, though, I could see him going to L.A. Either L.A. or San Diego. Durant? I could see him joining LeBron. There was discussion of that. The memes would be season. great. <laughs> the memes would be great if he joined LeBron. The final chapter. <laughs> <laughs> I think, I, I'm not the, what are you to say? Hey, Liz, hey, Kelly. I think if you joined an L.A. team, it would be the Clippers over the Lakers. It, it's one of those things where it's like, it's weird to say because it's you're talking about Kevin Durant. You're talking about arguably the best player in the NBA right now. And yet, I, I don't think the Lakers would be interested in him. I don't think he'd be interested in the Lakers. I don't think either, I don't think either party would be interested. Just now that I'm like thinking about it. And it's like weird to say because it's like, like, imagine saying like, yeah, like, as an organization, we're not really interested in LeBron. Like, yeah. what? What do you mean? I well, think Durant wants his own team. Well, I mean, do you think because, like, the way the LeBron thing went, do you think now there's kind of like a, a skeptical hey, thing from the Lakers to stay away from a high-profile player like that? Or it just, I think, it's, just, the, just I think it's more of the Magic thing than LeBron. Ma- Magic Johnson wasn't there to make the team better, and he didn't. Made it worse. <laughs> and, and bailed. <laughs> Like, they just, they, I think like if, they, I think they blew it. Hey Gina, I think they blew it because I think I think Luke Walton is a good head coach. Luke Walton was doing great things with that team before LeBron came in. I mean, they weren't winning high profile games, but they were making progress as a team. As What's a up, team. Shane? And they hired a guy that couldn't get it done in Orlando, a guy that couldn't make it over the hump in Indiana, and they brought in Jason Kidd because LeBron wanted him. Yeah, that's what it is. The Lakers were like, we're not really about LeBron, but they hired another guy because he wanted him. He wanted Ty Lue, but Ty Lue is a terrible coach. Well, he wanted somebody he could push around. Yeah. LeBron wants to be a GM, and he's not very good at it. Not yet. Not at all. <laughs> He'll retire. He'll be the next John Elway of the <laughs> NBA. <laughs> Just be really bad at his job. <laughs> Draft a bunch of whack people. <laughs> Whack people. Whack players. What is whack players? <laughs> Sorry, Trebek. I don't know. It's just it's one of those things. Uh, I'm surprised at the end of the day that the Sixers didn't beat the Raptors. I thought that they were going to beat them. I'm not surprised. I am. I'm surprised. Don't I don't be think, such a mass over their souls. I'm not. I don't think anybody was getting through the Bucks <laughs> in seven games. Um, I think the only way... Uh, I don't know. It's just, I agree. I don't. It's not exciting. It's different, but it's not exciting. Because yeah. at the end of the day, it's just it's really not that different. You just instead of LeBron, it's Giannis, and it's gonna kind of be that way probably for a while. And I, I mean, I'm all I'm all for Giannis. Like it's it shifted the, the cheering factor from wanting not Golden State to win to just wanting somebody new. Yeah, because. After a while, it just kind of became the lesser of two evils. Who do you want to see the win, LeBron or Steph? <laughs> it's like, yay, <laughs> you know. It's like, it's like, oh, who do you want to win, the Cowboys or the Patriots for the six straight Super Bowl? You know, so it's like that would be the worst thing ever. <laughs> six straight Cowboys Patriots Super Bowls, that'd be terrible. Tie, ah, <laughs> and there's no winner. They just <laughs> they split the trophy every year. <laughs> see you next year. Be the worst. I don't know. In my personal opinion, I think Katie wants his own team. Own team. And I think either the Knicks or the Clippers are the two destinations. I don't think there's anybody else. I think that there's a lot of speculation, but I think that there's a bigger probability than people are giving credit that nothing happens at all. Yeah, that's true. I think I think people like like myself would want something to happen. You know, just. Well, you're a different. Knicks fan. Big Knicks fan. Really, you the know. only thing that Kevin Name Durant being on the Warriors, the only crime that's really been committed from Kevin Durant being on the Warriors is just that we've been, as fans of basketball, as spectators, we have been robbed of true Steph Curry magic. We haven't been able to see him be his, his own player for 82 games in a season, plus the playoffs. Till now. But that's because he's not it. 
for some reason. So, I don't know, but I think that there's I think there's a sh- much stronger possibility than people are giving it credit for that Kevin Durant doesn't go anywhere. Yeah. I mean, what do they really need? They don't need bench. They don't need a bench. They don't. And Steve Kerr and the front office are very good at finding diamonds in the rough late in drafts. They're Belichick. They find people that fit the role, and when the time comes for them to get paid, goodbye, we'll find the next one. Yeah. Foreseeably, and though, Boogie's leaving, though, right? I th- I think Boogie is the is the more surefire thing. The only way I see Boogie staying is if the Warriors don't win the NBA Finals and KD leaves. I think if KD leaves and they lose, Boogie will stay. Okay. That's fair. I because Boogie, uh, Boogie didn't go there. I mean, like, there anybody who thought Boogie was going to be, like, the deciding factor for that team, they're full of shit. Because Boogie's not, he's a great player, but he's overrated offensively. And in my opinion, my honest opinion, I don't think he's even a top five center in the NBA, to be honest with you. And he's just not, he's not taking over games. It's not, it's not a show. It's never going to be his show. Right. The only person on that team that he is more reliable than offensively is Draymond Green. <laughs> but Draymond's very good. Defense. Right. And he's also a team, he's also a leader. So, <laughs> Boogie just you know scowls. It was like <laughs> whatever game it was. I think it was the last game. Jordan Bell had a fast break dunk and he missed it. He missed the dunk. And he he let go too early. It went off the back iron. Oh, he was he was beating himself up. And they showed they like did the the mic'd up thing. And they're sitting there at the free throw line. And Draymond's like, "Did I miss a shot today? Did Steph miss a shot? What about Clay?" <laughs> and he's like, "We all miss shots. Suck it up." And it's like, like I mean, still fuck him. He probably smells bad. What's up, man? He's a good leader. <laughs> He does. There's no way Draymond Green doesn't smell bad. He smells so bad. There's no way he doesn't. <laughs> that guy's just... It's not a race thing. I like the argument. It's There's nothing. no way he doesn't. <laughs> There's no way. That guy... If, you, if you're listening, give anyone, us reasons anyone why. Anyone watching on Facebook, you let us know if Draymond Green is a smelly man. <laughs> I just picture him smelling like if you, if you took like a carton of milk hey, that you had dumped out and you put it under a rock that's on pavement in the sun for like six days. And then you open up the carton and inhale. That's what I'm kind of picturing. <laughs> that's gross. Very specific. Like any dumpster ever. <laughs> Ever knows no matter what's in garbage, it always smells the same. Yeah. Don't know the reason for that. <laughs> well, it's like your poo. It's like poop. <laughs> yeah, but why would all garbage smell the same? But why it's does not all... just because it's garbage. But why does all poop smell the same? It doesn't all smell the same. All poop pretty much smells the same. Yeah. No. Farts smell different, but poops are pretty much the same. I don't know. I have some pretty different smells. <laughs> Speaking on God's <laughs> professional opinion. We're talking about, we're talking about bowel movements. I'm not... talking about Coach throwing up. <laughs> <laughs> you talked up here. Is our uh, coach going to give uh, everyone a, a hello for 100 shows? Uh, I don't think they want that today. Yeah, that'd probably be the end of our time. <laughs> Do it right at the end. Right at the end. Kick us off the air. We're here for 100, but not 100 more. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I guess, like, to just to... Continue. I, I think no, we get, we get on. fifteen likes. I'll show coach. Wow. I don't think everyone you guys here won. go like <laughs> it. <laughs> we have multiple accounts. What's up, Kyle? Golden State <laughs> rolls on. Different Kyle. <laughs> it's a wrap. I don't, I don't know. I'm not sold on Golden State winning it. I'm not. I, I think. I hope not. But if they play Toronto, it's a wrap. It's only Kawhi. So, last game is tonight for for well, Warriors, right? Potential last game. Yeah, potential last game. Yeah. Um, at like you know what's gonna happen? Steph's gonna be traded to Portland for Seth. <laughs> and then yeah, Powell terrible and trade. Get swapped. <laughs> and I love the, the me- I love the memes of Del Curry sitting down wearing Steph Curry's jersey, and then the next game he's wearing Seth Curry's jersey, <laughs> and it's like. Del Curry's out here living LeVar Ball's dream. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. He's doing it right. I mean, it's I don't I don't foresee things changing too much in the near future. I just I think the the Sixers it's gonna be the Sixers, the Raptors, and the Bucks. The Celtics will always find a way. Real aggressive pour over there. <laughs> and then in the West, it'll be like, you know, the Rockets will be in the mix, the Blazers, and like the Nuggets, and then, but the Warriors. I mean, I just don't see, 
Who's got that piece that's coming up? Who's got that young piece that's coming up that's going to dethrone? Denver might. Denver doesn't. They <laughs> might because we don't know what they have in Michael Porter Jr. yet. Who would have been a first round pick, uh, the first overall pick, if he didn't break his back? I understand that, but seems like a pretty significant injury. <laughs> yeah, but, he's fine now. He's dunking. But it's like. <laughs> But it's like, but is that something that is he going to be that player that's going to immediately put the Nuggets on top? He has the capability of doing it. But like next year, I don't see why not. You think next year the Nuggets, if he 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 can single handedly take the Nuggets from where they were this year? Not single handedly, but he well, has. it has to be single handedly because the rest of the Nuggets team is going to be the Nuggets. You have to go based off of what they are now. Joe Kick's not. I mean, Joe Kick's not going to be like putting up ten more points a game. Grabbing five more boards a game, getting three more assists a game. Well, the three more assists might happen. Yeah, but the rest of that's not going to happen. And like, I don't think Murray is going to be getting leaps and bounds better every single year. Can upgrade your small forward position. I understand Perhaps that, but I'm saying, but does it is that making is it make a does that make them better than the Warriors in the next two years? It all depends on what the Warriors lose. Only if they lose Kevin Durant. If they lose Clay Thompson too. I'm saying if they only lose Kevin Durant. Yeah, I think they could beat him. I don't know. I don't think so. Because they they were doing it fine without KD before. Yeah. Was this the worst uh, worst season they've had and, and, and as this squad? Yeah. They, they've been the one seed since they've been winning the championship. Since they went and faced LeBron the first time, they have been the one seed. But I guess what I mean, like, just general record-wise. This is the most losses they had in... Yeah, but like a lot of it has to do with a lot of guys. Right, not, not that it matters. I'm just curious for historical yeah. Yeah. purposes. Yeah, because Steph missed time, KD missed time. Boogie well, didn't play like the first third of the season. Yeah. But, whatever. Screw them. <laughs> I don't care. I just don't see anything changing in the immediate future. I mean, if everything plays out the way the media wants to portray it, where, you know, the Knicks get Kyrie and KD, maybe. But even then, I mean... The, if the Knicks get Kyrie and KD, the Knicks still aren't my favorite to win the East. <laughs> it, it's what would it take for them to be your favorite? Get more pieces. Yeah, they don't have anything. They have no depth. They don't have. They don't, it's not even, they don't have surface. That's why they <laughs> wanted Zion in the worst way. It would have been yeah. They would have been leaps and bounds better towards the first overall seed in the East. If they had Zion, got Kyrie, and got KD, because they, Kevin Knox is a solid player, and and if they if they managed to keep um, DeAndre, like that would be big, because then you would do like DeAndre. What would you do, DeAndre, Zion, KD, Knox, Kyrie? I would do no. I think Knox would come off the bench, but I think KD would play four. It Either is, way, it is perfect though. You know, it's just the most appropriate thing to happen to Knicks that they don't get the number one. You, you know, know what though? Lottery pick. Now they have leverage if they want to trade. Right. It just I just mean as like if there is something like the whole snake bitten thing. Like what what else bad like it could happen? I can and, see the Knicks making a trade with the Pelicans. Right. I, I, what I'm saying is that it's not out of the question that all these things could fall into place, but it's just funny as an as a viewer, just like, like of course this would happen. What's up, Dave? It just it's how it goes. I was, I was happy. How, Fuck how do they things. have leverage? I'm. I'm I'm not disputing you. Because but. in this draft particularly, the first three picks Are is, all... is what is what's gold. Anything after that is silver. There's <laughs> nothing great about it. So you get Zion, right. John Moran, and RJ Barrett. Okay. Other than that, you don't know what you're going to get. You know you're going to get at least somewhat stardom out of the other three. And the Grizzlies are not trading their pick. They're going to trade Mike Conley, if anything. So now the Knicks will be like, okay. Pelicans, perfect example. Give us Anthony Davis. What's up, Eric? What's up, Dave? Next one, Anthony Davis. You've already said it. Swap. Now you now the Pelicans can pair up Zion and R.J. Barrett. I'm just tired of hearing Knicks fans bitch that they got the third pick. Because here's the thing. Statistically speaking, they had just as much of a chance at getting the third pick as, as the they did pick. the first pick. The Bulls got the seventh pick. They were supposed to get the fourth pick. They went from having an impactful player that was going to change their team next year to who knows. Now the Bulls' best op- now the Bulls' best scenario right now is trading away the seventh pick and Chris Dunn for Lonzo Ball. That's the best thing that they can probably do with that pick right now. The Sixers could have got the first pick, but they got four. They didn't get any. 
Well, God, they had like a 1% chance. Yeah, well, that 1% <laughs> was something. Roll the, the dice. Process. Can you imagine if they got it? Has that happened before? What? Where a playoff up, team Stan? has gotten the first overall pick? Well, they did, it, wasn't, it wasn't theirs. It was Sacramento's. Yeah. Sacramento traded their pick to Boston, and then when Boston traded the first pick. So Sacramento traded the pick to Boston. Yeah. When Boston did the deal two years ago where they the Sixers traded up to get Markel Fultz, it was part of the deal was that the Celtics said, all right, this is still our pick, but if it becomes the number one overall pick, you get it. And they got it? No, no. no. They didn't okay. get it. But, See, I, so, I get so confused in basketball trades. <laughs> when the I, Sixers get that pick next year. Okay. Because it's all gamble. That's the thing. Yeah. The first round pick, it, it's it's – you take all the chance in the world on. That's why they do like certain round protect, certain ship protection on lottery and things like that because it's gold. Otherwise, you know, it's best for Zion anyway. If it didn't happen, he would have just tore his ACL. The first round pick in the NBA draft is worth more than any other pick in any other draft. Yeah, by by far. Because that's it. After that, the th- having okay, put it this way, in like this draft, for example, the tenth overall What's pick up, in the NBA draft right now is probably worth to the equivalent of. A mid fourth round pick in the NFL. Yeah, game. wow. That's the tenth overall pick. Wow. You, you won't get immediate production. You'll get a bench production. The chances are, yeah, the chances of, of anybody going outside of the top five being a con- contrib- contributing starter is slim. You get those guys that do become good over time, though. Then they're not immediate impact. Like Manu Ginobili was a second round pick, but Manu Ginobili wasn't winning the Spurs championships in his first year. Yeah. Why is that development so slow? Because because you don't get the reps. Also, your imperial players are played way different basketball. It's known that they're more soft. Hmm. But it's not even that though. I mean, but even if you you draft somebody that played American basketball their whole life and went to Michigan or something like that, and you drafted them twenty seventh, you're just not giving them the floor time. It's just not they they, they because the starters already in, have in, all the minutes. The NBA and in basketball in general, you don't prove your worth through practice. It's not how it works. You prove your hustle. You, you're pre- in practice and in scrimmages and things like that, you earn hustle points. Your hustle points earn you minutes. Then your minutes is where you prove it. Yeah. If you have a practice where you ha- – if you do a, a six-hour-long practice and all you're doing is scrimmaging and you go 79 for 79 and you lock up your other guy and he doesn't score a single point, that didn't earn you – that's not going to earn you a starting spot. For a game, none of that. It's going to earn you. You might get the coach might go. All right, let me give him, let me give him five more first half minutes. See what he can do with it. it it's and a, then it's, it's like, oh wow, on the he was really productive. I'll keep that in mind for next time. It's not like, well, let's give him five more minutes next time. It doesn't work that way. You earn hustle points, and your hustle points translate into playing time. Unless you play for a shit, a shit squad. Well, that, yeah, that was going to be my question. What if you have a team like the Knicks or the Suns, where? Like you said, they don't even have a surface. Well, the, the sun Sixers. has a surface. The, the Knicks and the the Knicks and the, the Suns are going to be like that for a long time because since they don't have even a surface or the depth, at least the Suns, the Suns are they're better off than the Knicks, but not because they still finish with the same record every year. At least the Suns have the All Star. They have that guy. They have the guy that can be a top ten player in yeah. the NBA. Just doesn't know how to play any defense. Right, but neither does James Harden. So. Um, the problem is, is that these teams, they try to rebuild through the draft and you're never going to have more than four picks in the the draft and you're never going to have more than two picks that mean anything in the draft. Mm -hmm. So you can't build through the draft. You have to build through free agency and complement it with the draft. Now it's hard to do because you draft first and sign free agents later, but that's just what you got to do. And the Suns and the Knicks aren't good at signing free agents right now. They're just not. The front office is not good at finding talent in the open market. They're not good at pulling people off the street. And nobody wants to play for them. Which is, which is, I thought, you know, if someone had told, if the Knicks had won the, the lottery and someone told me that it was rigged, I would believe it. Because think about it. If sports are bad in New York, then they're kind of not doing well in general. Yeah. No, you're right. It's just the market. It's the media. And it sucks because it's like, who gives a shit about New York? <laughs> There's so many other big markets. What's New York even good for? Absolutely. Traffic. Nothing. The Naked Cowboy. I like the Naked Cowboy. Is that guy still out there? Probably. Just Matthew McConaughey. Fireman Ed. <laughs> <laughs> just Matthew McConaughey. 
the heck? All right, all right, all right. <laughs> so I guess we'll touch briefly then. Um, the Bruins are in the Stanley Cup. Yep. Yep. And Ooh. last time I looked, I think it was the Blues were up 3-2. Yeah. yeah. Right? Blues are up 3-2 after overtime, right? Yep. Overtime game. Paul's nightmare. We went to, what, double overtime last night? No. Yeah. No, it was double overtime. Oh, okay. Um, was that the hand pass game? That was the, yeah. Um, yeah, that's been, it's, it's been a rough, 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 rough Western Conference officiating playoffs. Especially, and it just sucks because it's like, there's nothing worse than when you have this bad officiating, but it always happens, like, it's been happening in favor of the same team every time. Yep. Yep. And it's, it's just terrible because it takes away from what the team's doing. Yeah. yeah. Or has done. I mean, It's not the team's fault. No, it's, it's like when the Steelers played the Chargers. Every player on that Chargers offense knew that that was a they were offsides. But what are you supposed to? I was offsides. It's like bad. It's like that bullshit commercial that they had, where like the kid touched it, the high school team, and then the kid. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. The sports sport coach, I touched it. Coach, I hit it. Don't do the right thing. Like, no, are you kidding? If I was the coach, I'd be like, sit your ass down. Yeah, I'd be like, shut up. You're yeah. benched forever if you open your mouth. <sighs> I remember that commercial. That irritated me a lot. Because everyone, I mean, anyone that's ever played an organized sport has gotten that such, you know, even our softball league, you know, guy tags you, but they call you and you're like, yeah, I was out, but he said safe, well, so like, that's all that matters. Yeah. And then it's like the tagline, it's like sportsmanship. Like, yeah. well, how about just don't be like a, a jerk? Just, yeah. be, just be respectful. Like, don't don't give away that. You know, Just don't punch the guy in the face. Just, you know, <laughs> right. Sports. Eric Eric's celebrating. Like, what are you, a Quaker? Come on. <laughs> <laughs> Play the game. The Hurricane Cinderella story ended. Um, it, I, I think they had a lot of potential, and I think they would have had a real shot at going to the Stanley Cup Finals if they hadn't swept the Capitals. Yeah. I but, just think that the, they, they you had a bunch of teams that went deep into their runs, and you played four, and momentum, it dies. It yeah. just does. It's just the nature of things. And... Um, you know, it's gonna be it's gonna be interesting to see if that happens to the Bruins. The Bruins are the Bruins are the better team than the Hurricanes by far, but the Hurricanes are playing much more inspired and much more meaningful hockey. But that's what happens when you take that time off. So it's gonna be interesting to see if that happens to the Bruins because the Blues and the Sharks play tomorrow. Yes, and so there's a possibility for it to be over. How about we? How about the trade Chara? I'll be okay with it. Trade Chara? I don't care how they do it. They're never gonna trade him. I don't ah. like him. It's not a matter of not trading him. It's just, who the fuck's going to trade for him? He's like 40. <laughs> Fight him. He's well, like yeah. 43. We gave a charge and some Cape Cod chips. How's that sound? <laughs> Breaking But jaw. I tell you, you watch. He's going to retire from the NHL. He's going to go back to the Czech Republic and play another 15 years. We got him in the zone. Yeah. He owns the team he's playing for. <laughs> Does he really? Yeah. Ooh, That's awesome. Like a, a player owner? <laughs> Big fan of that. Um, fuck you guys. Let me show you how it's done. <laughs> So has there been three things now that's happened in that series that uh, Sharks Blues? Or has only been the, the two. Three things. We, we, we were talking about like, oh, issues. No, no, no. One, it was one. There, was there's only been one. Oh, I thought it was the hand pass one. happened in this game, and then it was when Vegas was playing. Oh, Vegas so it was different was different series. And, and then they got the five minute major penalty, which it should have just been a double minor. But there was the one too. You still I, shouldn't was, have given up four goals, though. There was one in the. Um, but you're playing a man down for five straight minutes. Yeah. Four goals. You're playing a man down for five straight minutes in the playoffs. I don't know. All right. Four, <laughs> four goals is a lot, but but again, it, it's not like a normal penalty where they but score was, once and the guy's back on the ice. I know. You also played the long shift. None of you know what that is. No. no. Yeah, it's a long shift. No, no. The, the long shift. Oh, I thought you said when... shaft. <laughs> I thought you said weast. <laughs> the long, the long shift is when you play. When you have hockey going, the net that you're defending, you have the bench on the opposite side of it, so you can't change players in the middle of a defensive possession. So, if the Sharks come in and they're holding the puck in your zone, passing it around, getting shots, getting the rebounds, setting it all up, if they do that for a minute and a half straight, your guys are out there for a minute yeah. and a half straight. The average hockey shift lasts twenty five seconds. Is it really? Yeah. Yeah, they're quick. 25 seconds. Wow. It's a, it's a vicious game. <laughs> There's some players out there that stay out longer, stay out there longer. Players like Stamkos, Tarasenko, Patrick Kane, players that are 
Sometimes players that up, are LB? physical, but it's usually players that are quick and really good with their feet and can avoid getting hit. Because if you, that's really where a lot of the brunt comes from is all the physicality of it. Yeah. yeah. But 25 seconds, being out there for a minute and a half. Yeah, all right. And it, you just get worn down. You just can't do it. And when you have that free guy, you know, you they essentially can just be like, all right, you're not being guarded. Park it in front of the goalie. Just sit there. Yeah. yeah. Just be a wall. But, you know, other than Boston being in it, you know, it's... it's well, it's, the Celtics ruined it for everybody. Yeah. 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 Thanks. Could have been, you know... No, really, like, thanks, guys. That's awesome. Yeah, we appreciate <laughs> it, you know. Thanks. Us anti-Boston fans. There is no reason to hate all of Boston sports. I just don't... I don't like hate them. all of Boston sports. Oh, I, just, most I just hate the Patriots and the Red Sox. I don't care about the Celtics, really. That's one thing I actually that... do care about. Huh? Fuck the Celtics. <laughs> you just hate Al Horford, because he looks like an alien. Part of it. <laughs> Part of it because you own the Sixers for no reason. There's those guys in, in all sports. Chipper Jones, Just random guys. Why I got bring yeah, his name up. Chipper Jones. Why I got bring his name up. <laughs> right, he was more of a Met killer than a Philly killer. Wrong. He was both killer. Did he ever win a World Series? Yeah. yeah. How many? Chipper did one. Yeah, yeah. So who cares? He won one ring. He's part of that like '90s Braves team that had Glavin, yeah. Schmoltz, and Maddox. But was still good. Ran the league. Yeah. Rats, all of them. <laughs> More than Jason Worth? Yeah, J- but Jason Worth is like right like a tier below. Actually, I was talking with Kyle earlier about my disdain for, not not so much now, but the, the Phillies team in like 0- 07 to 2010, hated them so much. Sewer Rat, Jason Worth, Ryan Howard, Shane Victorino. <laughs> Ugh. Awful. All of them. Hate uh, them. Kyle liked them. Otley? Yeah, even, especially Utley. Don't be hating because you broke your boy's leg. That was a dirty move. It was a dirty play, guys. Whatever. Dirty play. I'm not saying it wasn't, but he sucked anyway. You've been anyways, defending so. him for years for that play. That was <laughs> no, a I dirty have. play. No, I have it. I said it was a dirty play. <laughs> but you know, it's funny. I don't really like uh, it was Ruben Tejada. Yeah, he, he Never really liked him. <laughs> he did you a favor. Yeah. I thought you were about to say that he faked it. I was like, no, he broke his leg. No, no. <laughs> the, guy, the guy was batting 180. Yeah, Ruben Tejada was not good. And we had him forever. <laughs> so stupid. Is he still in the league? He was with the Cardinals, but I don't know if he still is. <laughs> Awful. No, he played for Baltimore. Well, that's appropriate. But anyway, the Mets were bad, and the Phillies were good. Well, that's they are. Happened. They are bad. Hey, we had a two-year period. <laughs> All right. We're going go to go to break. We're going to go to break. We're going to go to break. We're going to come back. We're going to do fun stuff for the next two hours. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now the house business is out of the way. Nothing else we need to talk about this week. Talk about? Yes, we'll talk about Taco Bell. <laughs> So we'll be t- we'll take a quick four minute break and we'll be back very shortly. And now, back to getting sports with drunk on the PPRN Radio Network. Welcome back to getting sports with drunk. I'm your host, is Cupcake the Riddler, and I'm joined by Ass the Man of Many Names. No, <laughs> <laughs> we're only a hundred episodes in. Kyle hasn't gotten this down yet. No, I got it down. I did it on purpose. I know. No, you didn't. You didn't know. I swear to God. You don't believe in God. Swear hey, what's up, George? Joe? Phillies. What's going you on? You don't believe in the Phillies. Liar. You don't believe in them. I don't believe in the relievers. You don't believe in them. Speaking of, Bryce well, Harper the World Series really earning that money hey, this year. Uh, getting it up. <laughs> getting He's it up. batting Last series had a great series. Had two really long home runs. <laughs> Gray hair, though. That's always going to be the thing with Harper. I mean, even the last couple of years, like the average hasn't really been there, but the power numbers and on base percentage has been. Oh, Who gives a shit if he's like hitting five. home runs? He walks every day. If you bat two hundred, but you have fifty five home runs and one hundred and forty seven RBIs, did you have a good season? Yeah. Ryan Howard. Yeah, that smells so bad. Uh, the burp. Late. Yeah. I don't know. Oh. That's a bad burp. <laughs> Rebecca takes me. Let goes. me walk. Let me walk you through. <laughs> let me walk you through my dinner situation. Okay. Oh. Please tell me what you why said. this burp smells like this. So I walk in the house. <laughs> Immediately get greeted with a plate of meatloaf, uh, extremely buttered carrots and peas, mashed potatoes, and King's Hawaiian rolls. Ooh, big fan. So I ate a small portion of everything and then proceeded to eat eight King's Hawaiian rolls. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, that's so bad. Rebecca texted me, 
between the burps and just our general stench. She goes, it smells like bad Italian food down here. <laughs> <laughs> Which she's is not wrong. Perhaps the funniest thing she's ever said. It was yeah, in a text form. Tell you result. what, I'm getting a little bit over here now. <laughs> That's the really so strong bully souls over there. <laughs> <laughs> yay, go, yay, nay. You smell more than I do. What? Any past You're right. soul. <laughs> <laughs> Mox smells like lasagna. <laughs> I had lasagna for dinner. I heard Kyle told me. Gross. Yeah, I don't know what you deal with lasagna, Kyle. Kyle Kyle hates good food. Well, listen, I know he has like this thing against pasta. And I guess it's in the realm of but No, it's not in the realm of it, it is pasta. <sighs> you hate right. pasta? I, Let me I, ask you a question. Let no. me ask you a question. Okay, go ahead. Go ahead. All How kinds is, of pasta. No, no, no. I have a question. Hold on. I want the I want a group you consensus like mac and on cheese. this. I want a group Ooh, consensus God. on this. Hold on, Matt. I am not it's saying anything. You're not looking at me, though. You know what you're listening. <laughs> Look at him in the eyes. Tell me the difference outside of the ricotta cheese. That's the only thing. There's no difference. What's the difference between lasagna and baked and like ziti with meat sauce? There's no well, difference. Well, it is the same. Exactly. There is so, no but I'm saying, he it, was saying, like, I know it's in the realm of it's possible. What makes lasagna lasagna is the ricotta and the lasagna noodle. But the I, yes. lasagna noodles no different than the it's ziti not, noodles. It's not. I agree, I'm agreeing, but I'm, I'm saying ziti, that's if just... If I take ziti noodles before I put them in the pot, or after I take them out of the pot, and I just take a pair of scissors to them, I have mini lasagna noodles. <laughs> Man, you'd be there for a long time. So let me... <laughs> not hold if on, you do three on. at a time. we got to rewind through this. And you only cook nine. <laughs> Go ahead, Matt. <laughs> that's kind of cool. Do you nine eat mac and cheese? I like cheese. <laughs> You're like, it, what? It trumps it. What do you like? Chess. <laughs> He's got a thick accent. Yeah. <laughs> So so yes, you like you like mac and cheese. Yeah, but okay, you're fine. I don't Shut like spaghetti. Then. That's it's not a, spaghetti. That's right, macaroni. Horn, what's your favorite pasta dish? Go, mass mac and cheese. Mock mac and cheese. Nobody's saying Ches. Souls. Mac and Ches. Oh, right. I don't recognize Ches. Shut your face. I wasn't there for Ches. Rebecca, shut your face. Just say it, and we'll we'll say it out loud for everyone. Or say it there. Go ahead. Go ahead. Spaghetti. <laughs> Nerd. Turn, turn down the microphone. Ah. Uh, Mac and cheese. American chop suey. <laughs> Just really American, out of left field here. American chop suey is a close second. But American chop suey? It's really know, easy. It so is. American chop suey is just elbows with like tomato so, like sauce and paste. So it's not like tomato. It's not like pasta sauce. It's just like paste. So, yeah. It's Op- thicker. Op- and, then it's, with and then it's ground beef and then diced up onions and that? peppers. Yeah. Oh, so, that? so like a beefaroni type deal. No. No. Like American chop suey. Yeah. Beefaroni doesn't have vegetables in it. Uh. Sometimes what'd you say? Then that's American chop suey. <laughs> uh, I don't understand your accent. Beth. Beferoni, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes I eat the cheeseburger beferoni. <laughs> I, I hate cows so much. <laughs> you know what my favorite thing to eat with, on the side of cheeseburger beferoni is? Grimbens. Oh, Grimbens. For you people listening, Kyle, Kyle's just illiterate and <laughs> came up with his own way to say these words. Or Beck Benz. <laughs> Rebecca. Is that Beck's green beans? What do you think? Beck Benz. Well, please, turn on her mic. I'd like to see... Rebecca had cracked her own beer for the 100th anniversary show. It's called Cookie Puss. It's called Beck Benz. Wait. Cookie Puss. It is a milkshake IPA brewed from Captain Lawrence Brewery in Rhode Island? Yeah, with a mixture of Beck Benz. I think it's Rhode Island. And it's, what does he say? It's brewed in baked it beans. Oh. It's brewed in collaboration <laughs> with Carvel ice cream. So, there's another one. Rebecca, of don't worry about finding where it's from. Just take a sip and let us know what you think. I believe Carvel provided the grenadine for this beer. <laughs> almost, almost spit that. <laughs> <laughs> Is there this an inside joke? Well, Rebecca, Rebecca, the Rebecca. There are six listeners that care more than what we think. Yeah, what? but there'll be hundreds later. What do you think of it? Tell us. It's so you you were drinking the cookie puss. It's good, but it'd be better cold. That's fair. It's like Beck okay. Benz. They didn't have any cold ones. I'm sorry, Kendall. That's, That's not your fault. It was twenty dollars though. So. Tell you what, we can pay get up. you a glass with uh, ice. I'll pay you back. I've been yeah. interested in these because they had, they did Fudgy the Whale too. Yes, right? they did, and I had those. They were fucking phenomenal. Well, Mass, I've been looking forever for Fudgy the Whale. I will get you some this summer. Ha! <laughs> I have to wait. <laughs> <laughs> they haven't started making them yet. This I'm is, this I'm is an outrage. I'm going to Virginia in six weeks. Are you? Yeah, I'm gonna get that uh that other one, the Lucky Charms beer. What about the strawberry shortcake for, beer for work? Uh, just personal. Sorry. Oh, pleasure. Oh, well, pleasure. Yeah. Yeah, I'm taking it. I'm, I'm I'm throwing a hierarchy into Richmond. <laughs> I'm taking it. Yeah, I think go with it. It's a day trip. Yep. Oh, secret Virginia He's trip. Right trip. Secret <laughs> day <laughs> trip to Virginia. Secret Virginia trip. <laughs> We're taking the red eye. Go down there, and stay for 20 minutes, drive all the way back. <laughs> That's the plan. Can anybody here tell me the definition of the red eye? Uh, 
cream cheese. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> Not no, the knucklehead. I love that. Do you mean he, the flight? He said it with such confidence, but was wrong right <laughs> out of the gate. Do you mean the kind of flight? I knew I was yes. wrong. Isn't it uh, it's overnight. late night, uh, late overnight? It's like the midnight flight. I'm sorry. Crumb you, stay, you stay awake? The actual definition of the red eye is a nonstop flight from the west coast to the east yeah. coast. Yeah, crumb chess. No, it's funny. So it's a, I was it's going a, around it's a, a nonstop flight from the west coast to the east coast. It's traditionally LA to New York. It is four hours, I think. It's also a pretty terrible movie. Yeah, <laughs> but it's it's four hours, but you go back three hours. Yeah, you like, know it's a terrible movie. You're literally you're literally bit. So <laughs> that's funny. Uh, <laughs> He's got a little red eye because he can get no sleep or what? It's just the way the time change hits you. Uh, no, every time you take that flight, the Visine guy is next to you. <laughs> you are, sir? Yeah, pink eye. Thank you. Oh. Dry cool. eyes. I don't, don't, don't want to take that. Green eye. <laughs> uh, yeah. All right, so Matt has prepared a, a funner, more fun segment. I like the word funner. Different. I don't know why that's not a real word. Well, it's two words. Oh. Well, funner? Take you it to... more funner. I, I meant funner. <laughs> More funner. Take so, it to Mary So there's a whole new persona going on right now with the bright orange shirt and the sunburnt face. <laughs> they, they, they you're really, you're really bringing out the 6 a.m. Home Depot outside type of look for yourself. <laughs> Gilberto yeah. So yeah, You're about to complain to the manager why there's no red mulch. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean there's no red cedar? <laughs> but instead, of, no, it would be more like, um, where's the cedar? <laughs> <laughs> No laughs from so <laughs> <laughs> upset. What do you right. got, Mass? Mass, go ahead, Mass, go ahead. All right, so um, in the middle of the NBA Finals, there's been a lot of coaching turnover. So that's I, not record scratching. That's, a, <laughs> that's a Riddler. So I figured we could... Uh, <laughs> I almost don't want to do this anymore. No, go ahead. I won't uh, do the kind of So... Come on, <laughs> spit it out. Yo, hey, it's the 100th show. We can be sucky. Yeah, fuck you. There's been 99 shows of mediocrity. We can have one bad show. Um, so there's been a lot of coaching turnover uh, during the playoffs. Um, I figured we could take a look at the new coaches, take a look at the core players that they have on that team, see where we think we're, they're going to be in the next few years. What sport are we talking? Basketball. Okay. I, I was wondering also. <laughs> <laughs> he let off with that before I went. <laughs> Twice. Um, so, Luke Walton is out for the LA Lakers. Frank Vogel is in. Uh, Walton started us off, you know, he was there for three years, had a 98 and 148 record. <laughs> Sorry. Um, comes into a pretty good core. Uh, comes into having Brendan Ingram. Uh, has Kuzma, has Lonzo Ball. Where do we think they're going to be? In? I mean, LeBron's on that team. You could you could go ahead and say LeBron James. Everybody knows LeBron is on that team. Well, somebody listening, right? Maybe LV doesn't know. Rebecca doesn't know. And LeBron James. Where do we think they're going to be in the next few years? Uh, who's the new head coach? Vogel. Frank Vogel. They'll be seven, eight seed tops. That's the guy in Superbad, right? Vogel. Oh, Vogel's in Superbad, not Vogel. My apologies. Vogel? Yeah, that's uh, McLevin. He's Fogel. Yeah, they call him Fogel. That's like that was like his real name. Yeah. Chicka ching. <laughs> um. Hey, can I have? Oh one man, of those that one was so hot. hot. <laughs> wow. <laughs> can I have one of those highlights? <laughs> yeah, bring one over here too. No, be real smug about it when you give it to him. I want the look in his eyes. I want to know. I want to know when Captain Lawrence is coming out with the Pepto Bismol <laughs> ale. <laughs> Mass, a uh, little help here. All right, so I'm gonna say. No, no, I, I'll take the reins. Why? I just started. All right, go ahead. I just started. <laughs> I think the best they'll be is a 7-8 seed. Well, hold on. Let's give it a three-year cap. In three years, where will they be? 7 seed. I don't think they're going to be able to bring any of the big market free agents in. I don't think anybody wants to play LeBron, and Frank Vogel is a very underperforming coach. And his young core kind of digressed Lover. last year. They're going to be trading that core this year, at least – one or two of them. I just don't see anybody that wants to play with them. I think the Clippers are now the new high destination for LA. No, that's fair. I disagree. I have a disagreement. Um, I agree in the aspect that I don't think any free agents are going to want to go there. I think the Lakers will do whatever it takes to get one up. So I think that they will suck again this year. I think that they will, at some point this year or next offseason... They will trade this youth movement that they've got that is promising. 
for a star. Somebody. I don't know who, but somebody. Or maybe they trade a piece for a piece, like, you know, uh, like a a rising star for an aging star. And then, a ri- you know, two rising stars for a not-so-aging, you know what I'm saying? Like, something like that. Um, and then I think that their second year, I think they, they break barriers. I think they, like, make five four seed. And then I think they fall off hard after that. I, I think. think <laughs> so I they get, like, one good year. One good year in there that maybe make it to the Western Conference Finals or something like that. Or maybe go maybe go Game 7 against the Warriors or something mm-hmm. like that in the, the semis. Um, I, I just – I think the Lakers and LeBron James are too hell-bent on getting somebody. that They will get somebody. They, they will get somebody on that team. I personally don't think the Lakers will get anybody – Unless they trade LeBron James. I don't know. Because, I mean, I think that... I'm trying to go off the top of my head right now. I think that there are... One, two, three... Four, five... Six players... Seven players in the NBA right now... That aren't worth... Ball, Ingram, and Kuzma. And it's Embiid... Simmons... Giannis, Dame, Jokic, um, Mitchell, and uh, Kawhi. In my opinion, those are the seven players that aren't worth... And Kevin Durant, sorry. And Kevin Durant. Eight players. Those are the eight players in the NBA right now that aren't... That outweigh the benefit of those three young talents more. Other than that, everybody else is fair game. And that's a, that's a lot of good players. That's Clay yeah. Thompson's, Anthony Davis's, Kyrie Irving's. That's you know John Wall's. That's a lot of players, and there's a lot of superstars that are going to be on the move in the next three years. And I just they're they're gonna they're gonna get they're gonna find a way to get somebody. They're gonna get somebody. It's a matter of what they have, to, what overpaying they do, or what stupid GM they trick into getting it. But they're gonna give away the the talent for the star. It's going to benefit them in a one season thing, in my opinion, and then they're gonna fall back off after. Ron Baker to the Lakers. So I, I agree with what you guys said. Actually, Anybody else see the resemblance between Ron Baker and Monix? Ooh. I'm thinking of Ignoramus. I'm, I'm... Monix from the Flint, Michigan Tropics. Ah, <laughs> now you're speaking my language. <laughs> Mock was really trying to think about it. I'm like, who? I actually saw a guy... Uh, I went to uh, Money in the Bank with uh, Rita last night. We saw a guy... you're not a real friend. <sighs> Saw a guy wearing a Jackie Moon jersey. That's cool. Was a big fan. Should have taken a picture with him. Uh, it was it was real quick. He's going up the stairs, but oh, big Kyle, fan of that. Real quick. Um, so I was thinking, we should dump our significant others, get a man cave together, just uh, like a, a two bedroom apartment with a humongous like. So maple. Not, pretty much. Yeah. <laughs> I found something. It's only six hundred dollars, and we could get it. It's a giant framed. It's got. Oh, I thought you were talking about a place that was only six hundred dollars. <laughs> like, wow! It's a giant frame thing, right? It's got a Zach Morris autographed basketball jersey, and then an AC Slater autographed wrestling singlet, and then a Screech Powers autographed uh, like um like his sex tape. <laughs> <laughs> like a test thing, and then it's got the, the cheerleader pom poms autographed from all three of the the girls. It'd be the perfect thing for the man. Kate. Kyle would wear the singlet. <laughs> I would play with the pom poms, and I would kiss Zach Morris. Yeah, I gotta say something real quick. It doesn't really have exactly what they're talking about, but back in Maple, uh, they had a franchise in Two K. Um, <laughs> it was J Mart, Riddler, I that shirt and Souls. Now they went and they they bought jerseys. Oh, this other the Hawks player, franchise. The Hawks franchise. They bought Paul their own. Bought. Paul Riddler bought shirts. Well, so yeah, so we played the Hawks franchise, and we had there was a couch and a love seat. And we always assumed the same position every time the three of us were together and played a game. Jeff was on the left side, facing. The, if you were facing the TV, Jeff was all the way to the left, I was all the way to the right, and Kyle was in the middle. Yeah. And we'd always have the recliners up until the game got close, so they'd all go down at the same time, <laughs> we'd yeah. get up, you know, the edge of the seats like everyone does. But I, about, I don't know, 10, 15 games into it, I bought us Atlanta Hawks shirties with our numbers and our names on the back of them, and we wore them for every game. <laughs> so, not only that did they buy these, these shirties, I had the opportunity too, I got to uh, guest commentate a couple games. Uh, for a little I while. think I did that once, it, but I, we were real drunk. <laughs> you, you got to join me. I used to do it a lot. Um, but the best part of this, having these sh- shirts, these jerseys, 
I had to take a photo shoot of these guys. <laughs> <laughs> there was one because I had a mini hoop on the basement door. There was yeah. one of like Kyle like shooting a fade with away. the ball. I, that was his uh, GSWD. Yeah, that, picture. that photo. I, I have like six other photos of that that photo shoot. We should post them <laughs> from that day. And this, know, is gonna I'm gonna, gonna, this is going to be the summer part. of the GSWD belt. It's happening. I, I want to do. It's going to be. It's going to be happening. It's going to be up and it's going to be going by the end of June. Can I have and a highlight for you? Uh, yuck. And oh, we all video games. <sighs> no, it's gonna. We're gonna do real athletic events. I, I, we've been talking about. It. I'm dying to do the pass, punt, and kick. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we're gonna do what? basketball too, like the free throws and, and so on and so forth. Yep. We'll do like a home run derby. Yeah, home run derby. Ten slow pitch softball pitches. Oh, come I can't on. wait. I can't wait in football. To we'll do it. We'll do it at like Parker Farms. Oh, I own Kyle at Parker Farms. All right, fine. We'll do it. We'll do it at. <laughs> we could do it at Parker Farms. Yeah, Little Diamond. <laughs> Little Diamond. No, we could do the ninety foot field. Why? Why not? You gotta have a fence, though. Yeah, it does. Yeah, all it all has a fence. Not all of them. At all Parker, Parker Farms, Farms, they do. Oh, at Parker Farms. Uh, yeah, we're not gonna pregnant. go to Doolittle. I was getting pregnant. You gotta stop. <sighs> oh. Shut up, Matt. Embrace it. Oh God, I thought you smacked him. No, I would never smack him. I'd kiss him. Though. <laughs> the guys are all, all right. Okay so, Souls, take coach. a range. You pick the next one. What happened? <laughs> We're just keeping Mass's thing going. Pick the next one. Pick a team that's got a new head coach going into next season with the core they got, and we'll break down where we think they'll be in three years. All right, Cleveland Cavaliers. Who's okay. their head coach? What's their core? Uh, they picked up the Michigan head coach. Uh, Oh, uh, Harbaugh. Uh, <laughs> Jim. I, knew it was I fucking knew it. <laughs> it's like, John Bellin. What's up, Zach? What's up, Josh? Bellin. They also hired uh, J.B. Bickerstaff, uh, highest assistant pay coach. Who? J.B. Bickerstaff. He was from the Grizzlies. Tell me you don't know J.B. You don't know J.B. Rickshaw? <laughs> um, <laughs> they have Colin Sexton, Kevin Love, who I expect to be traded very soon. Speaking of J.B., not to interrupt, sorry, but... We finally found a reason to get Kendall to go to a movie theater to watch a superhero movie. What was the reason? The new Super or Spider-Man movie that's coming out next month. Is Jake Gyllenhaal in it? It's got J.B. Smoove in it. <laughs> <Ooh>. the villain. <laughs> I'm going to pre-order my tickets. I'll be right back. That was terrible. Are you going to come with us? I'll come. Nice. Uh, what might die, though. What? What nips are we buying? <laughs> McCallan, 21 year. Wow. He might die. What an expensive proposition. Kyle, shut up. Two for two, bro. <laughs> <laughs> All right, anyway, so go ahead, Sol. Yeah, they have a very young core with, like, vets that really don't play. J.R. Smith. Channing Fry just retired. You put respect on J.R. Smith. He man. sucks. He was never good. He was pretty good. I think you could say he was never good. Okay, sorry. He he, he was good at jacking up 40-foot threes and went four, four for 23. Well, maybe that's all it took. I'm not disagreeing with those stats you're putting up. I'm just saying that maybe it's all it took. No, but, you know, I don't think they've become anything. At, at all. Because <laughs> they have a pretty shitty pick this year. So when you say going, no, so we're talking like even five years out? I just don't see that core sticking together. Unless they make drastic moves. And can you give me an example of something that's attainable that they would do? Or could do, you know what I mean. Like bringing in. Let's also talk about them making like a trade for Robert Covington. That would be dumb. Well, what what do they gain by doing that? A young D three type player, but they were giving up their draft pick. What do you mean? So you get Covington, and and then what? That's it. I mean, right. I just I don't understand. Everybody wants to go to Cleveland. They're, gonna, they're unless they get a big deal for Kevin Love. I don't see anything happening. Do you believe in all uh, like any type of sports synergy? What I mean by that is, so let's say you know the Browns end up you know being like really good for the next three years. Do players want to come play for the Cavs because there's an energy in Cleveland? Do you no. buy into that at all or no? There's nothing in Cleveland, especially now. I think the food's pretty good. Winning football team. You had I'm actually going to Cleveland this summer. <laughs> Kyle. You you oh, had yeah. LeBron yeah. James. Right. Who's gonna want to play with Colin Sexton? But who like who's gonna bring in the superstar? Right, no, so I I agree with they what you're take saying. Like Jalen Brown, be a trade. <laughs> he might just stick there. That's it. But who's to say they can't over the next couple of years 
do a process of their own. Because they're not good at it. They weren't good at it. Because they did Jeff and Anthony Bennett. So it's Ben. Yeah. Same thing. What? Here what comes that classic K Souls <laughs> argument. So all the picks you guys have made since like two thousand and seven. No, we have to deal with an injury first before they become before they get in the court. That's not true. Yeah, it is. Jaleel Okafor wasn't good. Yeah, but he was hurt for like ten games. Yeah, and he Jaleel Okafor was injured. Then he played, and he sucked. Hey, yeah. He's been a pretty decent Pelican. He was high. <laughs> all right, I'll go Sacramento Kings. So they just hired newest coaching free agent Luke Walton. Is he in, is he gonna like be in trouble though? <laughs> no, he's fine. I haven't heard anything since. Then. Why well, would he be in trouble? Well, he was like accused of like raping some girl. Yeah, oh. they all are. He's white though. Kyle, that's not a defense. <laughs> yeah, but like, <laughs> he'd be like, "Hey, we all are. <laughs> so, <laughs> come on." When's the last time anybody got accused of it? Accused of it recently. When's the last time someone was tried for it and successfully put away all for right, it? Fine, that one. Who won the Clippers a couple of years ago? Who what? Was it the Clippers? I thought he said who won the Clippers. Yeah. Was who owned the Clippers? The guy that Sterling? <laughs> no, he was just racist. <laughs> the guy that yeah. helped build Apple. <laughs> he definitely asked who won the Clippers. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so second one, they've got. Uh, He's been drinking champagne. For <laughs> the bubbles went right to his head. <laughs> for uh, veteran, veteran presence on their court, not a whole lot. They've got Buddy Heald. <laughs> <laughs> Bogdan Bogdanovich and Harrison Barnes, who is a player has a player option this year, which he will accept. Yeah, which I also agree he'll accept. And then youth like wise, the there's stats. There's Willie Cauley Stein, who's a restricted free agent, which they might let go. Yeah, they, depending on what the offer he gets is. Um, but they have got Marvin Bagley. They've got um, their best player. Yeah, De'Aaron Fox. I'm sorry, I was thinking something. And then they got Harry Giles and. Also, on top of it, they still have, uh, you know, important role players in Frank Mason, Alec Burks, and uh, um, Corey Brewer. So, I don't know. This was a team that they just, they they made a lot of push to the playoffs and then kind of fell apart at the end. Um, I could see them being an eight seed this year. Um, I could see their cap being six seed. Within the next three years, which is it's a lot in the West to go from not making the playoffs to making the six seeds a lot, and that's a lot in the West. Um, I, I think that they've got nowhere to go but up. I think Luke Walton is a is a decent head coach. Um, I think he was making good progress with the youth in LA, and the LeBron factor took over. The only thing that's in the uh, Kings is their GM. Yeah, that is true. Top five worst GM in basketball, and I think the Kings have what's enough- Tino's name. Vladi Divac. Oh. And I think the Kings have enough young talent to lure a superstar to their team. Especially having made a push for the playoffs throughout the majority of the season. Right. Not to mention that there's only two players on their roster making double figure digits. Double figures in the middle thing. They're all they're all making six figures. It's making ten thousand dollars. <laughs> <laughs> but you got Harrison Barnes is the big guy making just under twenty five. And then uh Alex Burks was making a little over 11. But other than that, everybody else is under cap. I tend to agree with that. I think it's a team that definitely could make a push. I feel like this year, coming year, will kind of be a, a repeat of this past season. But I think the following year, you know, perhaps with an addition of a, we'll call it a, quote, high-profile player, uh, the other team could make a significant jump. Perhaps be maybe, we'll call it a six seed. I don't know. I think that's in the realm of possibilities. Kyle, than- would you trade Tobias Harris and Jimmy Butler for – Marcus Smart and Brad Stevens. Yeah. Okay. Okay. <laughs> what about the Bulls? It's not a new head coach, but still, co- but it is a new head coach technically because he was an interim head coach. He was given the head coach position officially. What do you think about the Bulls, Kyle? I think they'd be better off without with a different coach. Um. I swear to God, if you say it, Kyle, I'm gonna come over there and I'm gonna fuck. You I it. thought they should have went after Luke Walton. And I think the Lonzo trade would make a lot of sense because they're a big market team. Still, they still sell out a lot. But I think he would. I think he would sell make, out crowds. Yeah, <laughs> not like the <laughs> sellouts. Some clarification there. I think he would make his teammates better. That's the type of player he is, and that's the type of player that they need. 
He doesn't have to be the scorer or anything. Player they need. Yeah, Zach Levine could be the star, and Mark could star. shoot the three. He is the star. That could be. He, he just is. <laughs> <laughs> you could probably get some more depth. Because when you're starting a 6'4 power forward last year, and you got some problems. Kyle, who's the tallest person on the, the Kings? Probably Harry Giles. No. Is it call his sign? Nope. Kyle, he's talking the L.A. Kings. Uh, <laughs> no. <laughs> it's close to Kufus. He sucks. <laughs> yeah, but what school did he go to? I don't know. Oh, he come was, on, Kyle. No. Oh, come know, on, Kyle. This, you this. live to play this game. We're going to play it with the Sacramento Kings. All right, Kyle, ready? Yeah. Marvin Bagley. Duke. Where did Harrison Barnes go to <laughs> school? He's sick. North Carolina. What about Nemanja Bejalaka? Out of country. Uganda. <laughs> what about Bogdan Bogdanovich? Out of country. Serbia, actually. Corey Brewer. Florida. All right. Alex Burke. I hate Alex this Burks. so much. Yeah, uh, uh, USC? <clears throat> Willie Coley sign. Uh, Kentucky. Yep. Cody Demps. Kansas. Cody Demps. <laughs> uh, he doesn't have a picture, so I won't make you do that. <laughs> but he didn't go to school. Um, Yogi Ferrell. Uh, Indiana. Yep. De'Aaron Fox. Uh, Kentucky. Yep. Uh, Wenyan Gabriel. Don't know who that is. Kentucky. Harry Giles. Duke. Buddy Heald. Uh, Oklahoma. Yep. DJ Johnson. Who? LaSalle. <laughs> Costa Cufus. Probably went to USC. Nope. <clears throat> Max Keebler. What's that again? Frank Mason. Kansas. Uh, Caleb Swanigan. Purdue. Ooh, Troy Ooh. Williams. Matt, swish it around that foam. He went to USC. Nope. Hey, listen, if you're listening on Facebook, send us players. We'll quiz Kyle, whoever you send in. Yeah, Kyle's disgusting with this type of stuff. <laughs> I'm honestly... Let's play Stump Souls. Th- this is going to sound very asshole-ish, but this is one of the few things that I've actually been impressed with Kyle on. <laughs> <laughs> kind words with a mask of souls. <laughs> Nothing like a backhanded give compliment. It goes, it Matt, goes, give me another team. It goes, college rankings, hygiene, <laughs> nicknames. <laughs> give, give me another team, Mass. I got it. I got it. We'll do one more, okay? One more. Okay. One more. All right. Just one other team. Can you do that? How many sports can you do that for, do you think? Uh, two. Basketball. Baseball is way too fucking hard. Okay. Yeah. Because a lot of them are... <laughs> high school guys. High school. <laughs> I got it, man. I got it. I'm going to pull up an uh, NFL Actually, team. he does this with, like, like YouTube videos where, like, they, they start rattling off names, try to guess where they went to school, and Kyle tries to beat them. Are right, there Kyle, videos like that? Yeah. Wow. You ready? <laughs> All right, Bojan Bogdanovic. Pacers. So, out of country. <laughs> no, he didn't come out of the Pacers. He came from a different country. Which I said. Not, you said Pacers. Anybody else hear him say Pacers? Yeah, why did you say it like that? Because yeah. he's, like, he's saying the Pacers. Yeah. Like, oh. Paul's doing the Pacers. Darren Collinson. Hmm. But come on. Let me whisper it to myself. Uh, Kyle, if you don't know, say skip. All right, skip. Go back. Skip you university. Only get, you only get two skips. All right. Kansas. So you're just going to guess and not take the skip? <laughs> are you taking the skip or are you guessing? Skip. All right. Aaron Holiday. He went to UCLA. Darren Collison also went to UCLA. You can't go back until I go back to that one. Okay, but he went to UCLA. Well, it doesn't matter. <laughs> Write it down. Elias Johnson. <laughs> Say that one more time. Elias Johnson. Uh, USC. Nope. Corey, yeah, no. Corey Joseph. Uh, skip. CJ Leaf. Indiana. Nope. No. Nope. Too late. I know Wesley that. Matthews. Was it Matthews? Yeah. Oh, fuck no. Georgetown. Nope. Right, right. We, we, just, we just talked him up. Yeah. <laughs> Doug McDermott. He went to Creighton. Yep. Kyle Quinn. It's my favorite school. He right. went to North Dakota State. Nope. South Dakota State. Nope. Yes, it is. No, it's not. I'll bet you $100 is both. One of the Dakotas. You know what's funny? It's not. He's, he's, Who is it? He's Take the bet. He went to Norfolk State. Uh, Dakota. <laughs> it's funny. It's like Victor Oladipo. Indiana. He was convinced, but he only bet $100. Dave on he, he Reed. He knew who? Davon Reed. <laughs> Miami. Yep. Norfolk is in Demontis Virginia, Sabonis. by the way. I can't hear you. Matt kept talking. DeMontis Sabanis. Uh, Gonzaga. Yep. Edmund Summer. Sumner. Cares. Naugatuck Valley. May I try this one? Naugatuck Valley. Who went to Xavier? Miles Turner. Texas. And Thad Young. He went to Georgia Tech. That's actually incorrect because Thad Young is an MLB and a show player. No, I'm just I made a guy on the show. He's 6'8", 295. Wow. Jesus Christ. Can Catcher. I try, 
He hit. Yep. Yeah, as you're saying, catcher. <laughs> he hits bombs. He also shows strikes out. No, actually, I very rarely strike out. Yeah. Very rarely. Actually, Kyle and I, when we play, if we play, if we sat down and played ten games of the show, we would probably strike out five times. Double plays, thousands. <laughs> All right, we'll do one more NFL, and then we're gonna we're gonna keep moving on. All right. All right. Real quick, though, Thad Young, when he retires, going to have a bad All right, listen, you're sure. not doing the whole 53-man roster here, either. <laughs> no, I'll skip over the people <laughs> without pictures. Oh, so uh, 48. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Blaine Gabbert. Uh-oh. Oh, come on. You love Blaine Gabbert. Yeah, I know. Hold on. Missouri. Ryan Griffin. The third. Who cares? <laughs> yeah, we, can't, we can't do all these. Like, like Jameis Winston. Uh, Florida State. Peyton Barber. Don't care. Wait, is Blaine Gabbert a buck? Yeah, what is Moving this on. Uh... Peyton Barber. <laughs> is he? I don't know. Okay. Andre Ellington. Is uh, Andre Ellington a buck? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Who cares? Texas. And Ronald Jones. Dude, you're naming guys I don't give a shit about. Uh, Ronald Jones went to USC. Yeah, like NFL, he's like good with it with like like, so like key players. Like, yeah. Like you can't sit there and be like, right, Andrew Whitworth. Well, it's funny is Kyle has called me and been like, "Hey, do you know where this guy played in college?" Like, no, Kyle. Mike Evans, Mike Evans, North Carolina. To, no, he went to Texas A&M. Chris Godwin, North Carolina. No, he went to uh, Penn State. Rashad Perryman, North Carolina. Rashad Perryman, <laughs> yeah. Perryman State, right? Say no, Perryman Roger Morris. <laughs> What's the school that Jeff always <laughs> Roger <obsessed> Morris, <laughs> <laughs> Pittsburgh? Yeah. Rashad Perryman. Skip. Uh, Cameron Bray. We're really doing this on the mic. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I don't give know, me, give me one more, man. Can, can we just do we, basketball? We gotta wrap this, this up. Cameron Bray. I don't know. I uh, mean, North Carolina. Harvard. Home Depot. So we went to school. Yeah. So, All right, basketball. Phoenix Suns. Sorry about that, Kyle. Yeah, that we kind of talked you up no, there, and then no, oh, no, your fine. segment's done. We're Phoenix done with your segment. Moving do. on. Phoenix Suns is probably the easiest one. No, we're moving on from this. He was talking. Good for you, Kyle. I'm sure the Sixers should be the easiest. Kentucky. All of them. No, Devin Booker. <laughs> Sixers, not. Yeah, it's easy. Baltimore would probably be the easiest one. Anybody Alabama, else Alabama, Alabama, else Alabama, talk Alabama, about? Alabama. What? Anybody else have anything to talk about? Everybody's supposed to bring things to talk about. So, Jerome McCoy just got released by the Bucks. Well, yeah, he's, he's being released the, tomorrow. He's going to the Colts. Yeah. I can see that. Uh, Reuben Foster also tore his ACL today. Yeah, he's going to the Colts. <laughs> <laughs> that Eli Manning, Daniel Jones picture was so funny. Uh, it really was, wasn't yeah. it? They look like fucking clones. Yeah. Well, it's funny. After he was drafted, it was the meme came out. It was like, the Giants actually drafted a guy who looked like he would play Eli Manning yeah. in Peyton Manning's life story <laughs> movie. Like, look at this. Tell you what. You know what we can talk about? What a disaster the New York Jets are. <laughs> look exactly the same. Yes. What a mess that team is. I hope I hope they win the Super Bowl. They're, they're talking about trading Bell. <laughs> Ooh. Why? I, I didn't. I didn't. Hear that. I saw it the other day because because um, Gase didn't want Bell. He didn't want to overpay for a running back, and now Gase is the acting GM. Like there, there's so, speculation that he might try and trade him. I can't remember the timeline. Was Gase hired? Prior Gase to was Bell? hired. Was prior. Then they they hired Gase. Then they went out and signed all their. Then they spent 192 million dollars in free agency. Then they drafted the players that they drafted, and then they fired, fired their the GM, GM because they didn't want to sign those players or draft those players. Oh, my God. So I, didn't, I didn't realize all yeah, that. So I knew that they was rele- Bell, fired, but... Bell could be on the move. That team is a dumpster. To the Pittsburgh Steelers. <laughs> oh, that'd be so I would funny. be so he happy. holds out again. Days of our Steelers. Question now. So you guys saw the Ben Roethlisberger apology yes. and all that. No, okay. About the right? <laughs> he married that girl. No. Yeah, yeah. His so, apology was, "I do it, for life." You know, I, I'm satisfied that you know he he felt that he needed to make this apology, or whatever. And then I guess Brown uh, like tweeted back, like two faced, whatever. I guess I guess I don't understand both parties. Like you know, you know what 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 does Ben gain by apologizing to the media? Like just this, this, it's it's over. He's trying now. to get it over with. Well, but it was well, over with. It was over with. Like, it he, was he, over he with. He just brought it back. It like, wasn't. N- Brown's going to keep talking this shit. Well, but no, even it. Brown wasn't saying anything. But Brown it, didn't have to go. Brown could have said, okay, no, no problem. It, it's simple. It was a disagree. It, it was something that happened that was viewed differently by two very different people. Yes. It was Ben viewing it as 
something that got in the way of the team and, more importantly, a personal friendship off the field. Brown viewed it as a business decision and took it as an immature child. I believe Ben <laughs> was actually upset, not about losing Bell as a te- or Brown as a teammate, but more so as losing him as a friend. And he, it was just a justification in his own mind that if I do this, there's no blood on my hands. Right. No, and I can agree with that. I just, but, but what Mock was saying, and I kind of agree with, like, for me, I think that, like, the dust had so it was settled. Done. Like, there was not really, the, the negative the attention was kind of quiet. apologize. Quite... It's not a big fucking deal. No, I'm not but saying Brandon it's a big deal. But Brandon has to be a apologize. fucking douchebag right. about it And I, I agree, but I guess what I'm saying is that, like, I don't know, I guess why say anything... At, at the end of the day, know. we've seen Brown for the last year act like a child. That that yeah. was going to be the only response. That was going to be the only response for Brown. I, I don't think there's an issue with Ben, you know, trying to make some type of amends, but it, it shouldn't have been done in a public format. If he wanted to do it, they should have reached out and talked and be done with it. I mean, I guess to, to counter my own argument, and, and your, I think it would have come out anyway. I, I, I just, I don't know. I, I guess I was because now it's like now unfortunately what's all we're gonna it's hear gonna about for the week. about again. That's it. So I guess it's. I mean, I don't want to make this a, a segment. I was just I was curious. I saw it today and I thought it was it was worth talking about with you guys just because it is and it's somewhat noteworthy. All right. The, excuse me. The the Brown and Bell drama is going to follow the Steelers for this whole season, whether they like it or not. I mean, there's it's always going to be talked about in the media. Even if the, if anyone on the Steelers never brings anything up, it's going to be talked about this entire year. I think Bell thing will only happen. The what what Bell said I think only happened because he didn't get the money he expected. The the Bell thing's over. It's the Brown yes. thing. The, the Bell thing because Bell wasn't a nuisance in the locker room. No, there was no bad blood between Bell and any of his teammates. There was during the season because the the offensive line felt betrayed. Yeah. But when it was all said and done, now it's all now that it's all over. No, there's no no bad blood about it. Sure, I'm sure some of the offensive linemen don't talk to Bell. That friendship has been severed. But it's over and it's done with. It was Bell making a decision based entirely off of business, nothing to do with personal. Brown made it personal. The Brown stuff will haunt the Steelers, not haunt them, but it'll. That's right. That's what's going to linger. It'll, exactly. It'll linger with the Steelers for at least this season. The Bell thing, I think, is done. Especially. The only way the Bell thing resurfaces is if Bell, in fact, does get traded to a division opponent. The other thing with Brown, too, is it's going to be important to see how the Steelers play, especially early in the season. If there struggles and it allows Brown to mouth off on Twitter, especially if Brown starts off well, or the Raiders start, you know, say through the first five weeks for whatever reason, the, the Raiders have a better record. Hypothetically. That's going to, I mean, Brown's going to keep talking, and, and that's going to be what's talked about. What if it's the other way around? If it's the other way around, then that's then there's no leg to stand on for Brown. Or do you think people talk to Brown? Brown's always going to talk. I don't think, do you think people talk shit to Brown? From the Steelers? Only if they're stupid. If okay. the Steelers, if, if Tomlin can't control them, then yes. I I'm think not saying like... If, I if anyone on the Steelers throughout the season starts... Talking to Brown like through social media, I'm I'm sorry, that's that's horrible. If it's on anybody, it'd be the offensive line. But it it doesn't matter who it is. It doesn't matter who it is. If anybody on the Steelers engages Brown in some like childish social media thing, that's a bad look on the team. It's a bad look on the team and on Tomlin. He's got to put a wrap on it. And and if Brown's gonna talk, Brown's gonna talk. He can't control that. But the, Which looks the like Steelers can't doing. engage it. Yeah, but Tomlin pretty much said, if anybody doesn't want to be here, get the fuck out. Yeah, which is, you know. But Tomlin's always that guy, like in the interview where he says like these powerful things, and then like I think his he actions. After all this. But what I, like his actions always kind of prove otherwise, where things happen and he doesn't really enforce the things he says. I mean, I I, I don't know. I think it's different now because his his job's on the line. We'll have to see. But that's the thing. It, uh, to me, a big thing to get the Brown thing to go away is the Steelers have to go out and perform just as well without him as they did with him. Uh. Whether or not that happens, I mean, who, who knows? But that that to me is going to be the big factor. If they go out and say the through the first five weeks go, I, I don't know their schedule. Let's say they go two and three, and the Raiders happen to be three and two. I, I think you're going to see people jump all over the Steelers are missing Brown and and so on and so forth. Yeah, 
to a degree, yes. But let's say that that, that same argument, if you know, the Steelers are two and three, or even one and four, and the Raiders are winless, you, I don't. Do you think they still have that same? I think the if the Steelers don't per play well, I still think that the the media will attribute it to Brown not being there. It doesn't matter. It had to happen. It didn't have to happen. It it all could have been handled differently. It didn't have to happen. It's just the way it played out. Right. Well, I mean, for myself, I was in a camp that I thought that the situation was salvageable, but you know, it turned out not to be. And you know, it's fine. It's over. It just, you know, it, it's funny because we're talking about it right now because of you know the statement made by yeah. Ben, which you know I, I'm fine with. I, I, if you felt the need to make an apology, fine, it's fine. But the 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 thing I'm saying is that you know I personally it wasn't even on my radar that situation. It, it's over. It, 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 it should have been. It, it was severed. I was I was not even not even worried about it anymore. I was. I, I, I don't know. So. So just real quick. Not to change subjects, but Kyrie wore a pair of Kyrie fives in a game one time that were friends. The the TV show, the TV sitcom Friends on Fire. Mm-hmm. So apparently, Kyrie, there's a, a leak out that Kyrie is in talk with Nike about making sneakers for other themed TV shows. In the <laughs> I'd buy Office shoes. Is um, that if that's what we're getting at? I'd buy well, Office shoes. He has shoes. the Sopranos, nah. which are they're essentially black and red. He has the It's Always Sunny. Yeah, which okay. are all yellow. Yeah, I'm in. He's got Parks and Rec, which yep. are a light blue with a green so- green soles and a green swoosh. He's got the Big Bang Theory, which are white and red. He's got the That 70 Show, which are purple, lime green, and blue. He's got the Family Guy ones, which are white and red. <laughs> He's got the Seinfeld ones, which are the blue and yellow from Seinfeld with the red swoosh Man, and this, the red This laces. guy's hitting nails on the head. He's got the Breaking Bad ones, which are all that more royal blue with the, the darker teal and white. The Simpsons, which have the brown back with the green and red and blue soles with the yellow base. And then The Office, which is white. I'm in. White with a blue back, orange laces, gray sole that says Dunder Mifflin on the sole. Ten and a half, order those. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty cool. The 20 grand. Are you serious? No. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take three. Well, well, I mean, not not to totally go off subject, but I was on the HBO shop looking at Game of Thrones things, right? Mm-hmm. They're selling a pen that's inspired for $65,000. What? Hold on. <laughs> Real quick, I'd like to get... Who's the, who's the Game of Thrones watcher here? What, did you guys... Were you guys as disappointed with this final season as everyone is saying all over the media? No. no. Listen, I, I, without, you know, spoiling anything... When I, no, this, fuck people. They could have watched no, the last no. night. This show does not care about the viewer no. at all. They don't. And that's been the whole thing with the show is people want to see things a certain way and the, the show and the books are just like, we have our story, deal with it. I'm reminded of a quote from one of the characters back in like season four. If you think this has a happy ending, you haven't been paying attention. I think that was just George R. R. Martin that said that. No, <laughs> that was actually Randall Bolton. That was Jack Nicholson. Mark, would you like to he sing the song? He played the dragon lady, right? The George <laughs> <laughs> Weeder, 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 weeder. Really, like, God damn it. This show, this show doesn't care about what the viewer wants to see. So everyone was disappointed with this season. It, it was rushed, and it, it could have been done differently, but they did it enough to where it was okay. Do you agree that it had a bit of a drip, dip in quality? Bit. Storytelling-wise. Only because it was kind of rushed. Because okay. I mean, it is what it is. Like everyone right, that does it was ready to move on. I just, I was just curious. That's sixty-one thousand dollars. Yep. They also sold a life-size Iron Throne for like thirty-five grand. That's fucking kick-ass. I yeah, I wanted 31. to get it. <laughs> just imagine showing up at your house. All right. So the the pen is made out of eighteen karat gold. Oh yeah. It, I mean, it's a quality utensil. It's not like a big no, pen. Just gold at Walmart. Well, the, just because it's made of gold doesn't mean it writes well. It's quality. It's a fountain pen. <laughs> Let me tell you about a woman named Jan Pettit. Yes. <laughs> um, shout out to uh, Jan Pettit. There is zero chance she's listening. Um, oh, hey, Janet. <laughs> no, Jan. Ah, uh, damn. Her name is actually Janice. So you fuck. Damn, no. The J. Eugene Smith staff. Soiled it. All right. We're gonna, we'll do, do some fun stuff real quick to wind out this hour before we come back. Because I think we have a Jersey segment we're going to get into next hour. So real quick. So we'll start off with Kyle. Kyle. Um, everybody, we'll, we'll include Jeff in this, even though he's not here. So, everybody at the table... The Reds. 
<laughs> Everybody at the table here has a different favorite baseball team. Yeah. Including Jeff if he were here. So, not counting your own, who's your favorite out of those and who's your least favorite? Favorite is the Pirates. I like the black and yellow. So, just for the jerseys? It's not about jerseys. So, you can tell you weren't listening. You're saying team. Like, yeah, just the Pirates. team. I like the team. I like Josh Bell. I like everybody. I like the youth movement. I just suck that they don't know what the fuck they're doing. Okay. Who's your least favorite? Yankees. Kyle, why? Because I don't like Can them. I Can I guess the person for the reason why? Go ahead. Is it your cousin Chris, Kyle? Because <laughs> it is. Yeah. <laughs> the reason why I despise the Giants. Yeah, I know. I know, Kyle. Well, we'll get to that one. But you're also the reason why I hate the Steelers. So. I don't, I'm not. Uh, I mean, and the reason why I hate the Browns of the teams, you know, here. See, he's got a different aspect to it because he's the only person here that's a fan. He's the fan of the. There's only one other AL team at the table, but you can't really hate that. Team. See, my thing is, I I think I'm gonna pick the White Sox, that's and it's mostly team. because, like, they're the most neutral. I guess, like, I don't care for the Cardinals. Fuck the Mets and the Phillies. No, no. Who's your least favorite? Oh, my. Le- I thought you were asking my favorite first. No, no. Who's your least? Oh, favorite? my least favorite is the Phillies. <laughs> and and it's only because of Kyle. <laughs> All right, who's your who's your favorite? The, I, I would say the White Sox, just because they're the most like neutral, I guess, and because they wear similar jerseys. True. Who is Jeff's team? Pirates. Pirates. Well, you couldn't have you couldn't have like figured that figured out when it they out. said pirates, and you couldn't have just been like. Oh, I forgot nope. that Kendall likes the Mets. I'm sorry. Yeah, he doesn't really like the Mets. Kendall likes terrible teams. Moving on. I could have said Steelers, huh? <laughs> that is, well, we're doing baseball right now, okay? I know. All right, so Mass, who's your who would be your favorite and least favorite? Uh, favorite. So, I'm just gonna say right now, you're gonna get a lot of heckling from us at the table if your least favorite isn't the Pirates. Okay, yeah. it's it's my least favorite. Okay, I'm just, I'm just I would have liked if you waited till after to say that. <laughs> he would have said the Pirates. <laughs> Their division. All right, moving on. Um, the video game. Yes. Uh, <laughs> favorite. They're actually, the division three. <laughs> favorite is the Yankees purely because I'm marrying into them, and I actually know more. Nerd. About them. Yeah, he's marrying A Rod. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna be so happy. <laughs> Did you ever see the video of A Rod like dancing, holding the camera? Like, he, yeah, yeah, yeah. He yeah. was at J Lo's like a, a J Lo like rehearsal concert rehearsal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he was like holding. The, um, he, he's like holding. The, oh my god. He's got like a selfie Jeez. video going. Did you, you know. see the video of him talking to the lady that? Was yeah. like, hey, you look like that guy dated J Lo. He's like, what do you mean? <laughs> <laughs> All right, so my least favorite would be the Yankees, followed very closely by the Mets, <laughs> and my favorite would be the Phillies. Suck it. And really, really. So here's the thing: my favorite has no bearing other than just I watch a lot of Phillies games. No, I, I, I know to like certain players on the team. I like that Reese Hoskins has an incredible batting stance. Um, it really has a lot to do with his power and how he follows through on the swing. Uh, you know, it, it comes from a when whoa, he was seven whoa, years old. Oh, easy there, Bob. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. It has to do with waiting on fucking Philly's fucking box office site for the phone line for forty five <laughs> minutes to get Kendall a fucking ticket to the game, um, which he wasn't even grateful for. What swine? I was so grateful. He wasn't. Did you buy me a hot dog at the game? No. Anyway, I continue. bought you no. stuff. No, you didn't. <laughs> yes, Not I did. at the game. You know what happened? We went and bought crab fries and didn't bring him back a hot dog. <laughs> they were closed. They were closed. I yeah, knew, I exactly what happened. <laughs> Thank you, Mock, for remembering, Kendall, you fucking swine. But anyway, we we're still stuff. trying to give you crab fries. Um, it's not our fault you didn't want that them. That doesn't actually sound that good. But really, really the thing, too, with the, they're not actual crabs. The thing, too, is, is like I think it would be the Pirates still, because I like the Pirates uniforms a lot, and I like their park better than the Phillies park. No offense, Kyle. I love the Citizens Bank. It's a great park. I just think PNC is great. Especially, Souls rolled his eyes. No, PNC is a great park, especially if you sit from third or first base towards home plate and you get to view up into the city. But I, I like Andrew McCutcheon a lot and Bryce Harper's got great hair. So, yeah. All right. And then you, Mr. Oh, Darren? Braves least favorite. No. <laughs> of players? T- when did anybody... You think I would say my least favorite team is the Yankees over... Oh, <laughs> just go yes. off script. Yes, I hate the Braves. <laughs> no, um... Where you only get souls for not paying attention, he comes out of left field with the Braves. No, but the Braves deserve to be mentioned. Um, I agree. No, it's funny. I guess it would be the Yankees. Um, least favorite or favorite? Least favorite. Um, is it because you're like their redheaded stepchild? Or is it because <laughs> Rebecca likes them? No, it's because, you know, I don't have a silver spoon in my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> um, and they have to shave their beards. That's fucking stupid. I, and I guess it would be the the White Sox. Because you know, unfortunately, the, the Phillies it's it's a tough thing. I'm not mad. I, well, I'm you know, Ma could have said the Yankees because Rebecca's a Yankees fan. I just want to explain because you know, Kyle and I we we, we, we exclude share... her from everything, and this is going to be what she's in on. <laughs> She was in on champagne. <laughs> Compagne, sorry. Thank you. How far down is that beer? <laughs> All right. She's got another thought. hour to work. Right? <laughs> Did you try it, Kendall? No, no. I'd yet. like you to try it. I'd like to get your take on it. Um. All right. And we'll do, let's do uh, football. football. Fuck you guys, by the way. Why? No one picked the Cardinals? Yeah. Because yeah, fuck the Cardinals. I, like. And as an NL fan, the Cardinals have always kind of been like a a big thorn in the yeah. side because they always like win and the pitching is always good for some reason. So kind <laughs> and then like they're never good the next year. All right, yeah, mass like, football teams. Who's your least favorite? Who's your favorite? So Steelers, Giants, and Bears. Just curious, is Rebecca in on this round? No. Okay. Doesn't matter. Damn. Well, and, it does because she's and a Giants. Kyle, fan. Kyle and and Kendall can't pick the Steelers. You sure about that? Yes. <laughs> All right. So Steelers, Giants, and Bears. Who's your favorite? Who's your least favorite? And and Saints. Oh, and Saints. Yep. Favorite would be the Bears. Least Just favorite. Just already. I might. <laughs> <laughs> I like the grin first. <laughs> uh, least favorite. Um, okay, you can say it. Kyle's not going to get up and fight you. I'm really debating between the Steelers and the Giants. I'd say the Steelers. For what reason? I think his own team is the Rams. Like, <laughs> this is my least favorite. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck this team. Right, my favorite. Just stop taking it so personally, Kyle. I don't know for what reason. My favorite. He didn't get it. Uh, see, it's tough because like forever it would have been the Rams, but like and it's because it was like the Kurt Warner, Tory Holt, Isaac Bruce, Marshall Falk, and then they sucked. No, it's not that. It's just like I'm not really in just love. Just say with... Mark Bulger. I'm not... <laughs> <laughs> Big Bulger fan. I'm not in love with any of the new Rams, but I'm not really in like I don't know. Like the Steelers kind of fall into the same category as the Phillies. Like it's just. You're so exposed to them being friends with these guys, which can be good and bad. Um, I'm gonna give it to the Rams, though. Good, bad. <laughs> I'm gonna give it to the Rams, and my least favorite. Not bad. I'm gonna give it to the Rams, um, and my I'm least sure. favorite is the Saints. Your least favorite is the Saints. Yeah, because of Jeff. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not gonna sugarcoat it. Jim Mart. He's like the super passive aggressive if, fan. If he's, he he is. To the Saints, what every person in Connecticut is to Boston. <laughs> <laughs> For what it's worth, if I didn't start out liking the Saints, the Saints would have been my least favorite. Here's the thing. If Drew Brees wasn't a Saint, they would be right after NFC North for my least favorite. (laughs) Baron? Uh, My least favorite would probably be the Giants. And not because you mock. But because of Rebecca. In my travels, I've run into a a lot of really bad Giants fans. Give me the name of the worst. Uh, Chris Mike Mock. Well, no, I'm not even close. <laughs> <laughs> no, actually, you know, Mock is not does not even really fall into this category at all. But I just, you know, people like through work, you know, I just yeah. I, I run into people and it's like, you know, we come on the topic of sports and they're just like, you know, where oh, you live, it's, right? It, it's it's it's, just, it's yeah. the it's the bad taste of living in an area where you're not a fan of the team. That's why I hate the Patriots. <laughs> live in New England, not a Pats fan. Imagine right. being me. Yeah, and uh, it, it would be it would be the Bears because it's very similar, you know, football style to, to Pittsburgh. Um, so and I, I was ground and pound that. defense wins games. I'm, I'm really into that. So and poor coaching choices. <laughs> Souls. Oh, these favorites are Giants. Kyle, can you go ahead and tell me why? Chris Jankowski. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Cousin of Kyle Souls, Chris Jankowski. Cut. Shout out. So, so if we can, if we can dial back, like if you take him off the table, I is would it still, still the hate Giants? the Yankees, uh, not the Giants, <laughs> the Yankees. I would still hate them. Um, and uh, favorite it's because of 09. No, I can care less about them. I just hate you guys. I hate your fans. They're all douchebags. All we're, of them. We're not all douchebags. Oh, we have 26. 27. Whatever. <laughs> see? <laughs> we're yeah, not all douchebags. <laughs> but I am. <laughs> well, I'm just saying, if you're going to insult us, say the you right guys, number. You complain your about favorite? steroids. Where your best players of all time have used them. Who's your favorite? Oh, we're not getting into this. Who's your favorite? Favorite is the Rams. I like Ty Gerald. 
So, so my answer is interesting because it's the same team for both, but for different reasons. <laughs> the Giants and the Giants. <laughs> Why do you hate the Saints and or the Steelers and love the Steelers? You hate the Steelers because of Kyle. You love them because of Kendall. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I, All right, so you have to pick. Do you? No. Hate, um. Does Does Kyle make you hate the Steelers more than Kendall makes you love them? It's funny because like all four of these teams, like I I do relatively like to a degree. Um, I've always kind of had a soft spot for the Rams because I I've always liked their jerseys. Here's the thing: no matter how good the Bears are, Giants beat them. Yeah. But, so it was a win on the schedule. But I tell you, went really heavy in Madden 03 was always the Rams. They were really good that year. Um, I wasn't playing that back then. That was, I had, it, had it on the GameCube. <laughs> hey, watch your mouth, heretic. No, Ma- but, uh, Madden on the GameCube? I thought you just watch called, I thought your you just Ken mouth. Oh, yuck. <laughs> what were you, were you making your own clothes, too? <laughs> like, God. That's nothing. You want, you want to hear a real throwback? NBA Live 99. On the cover, Boston Celtics Antoine Walker. <laughs> Kyle, how about that one? Yeah, that was fun. <laughs> I played. I played that on my Windows ninety eight PC. <laughs> I think my least favorite though is the Saints. Who's and, your favorite? Uh, my favorite's tough. I, come on, man. Because it it is between the. I, I think it's the Rams. Fuck. It's the Rams. You know, it's funny. It's not even saying between the Bears and the Seahawks. It's, it, nope, Rams. No, yeah. I, it was going to be between the Bears and the Rams again. Like. Because the other like football teams that are, is mostly because of jerseys, and I think if the Steelers never debuted the Bumblebee jersey, they would have won. But I well, hate hold on that a jersey. Hold on, we'll get there. I have two things to to point out for that. Well, one to point out for that, one to point out for something else. The Bears Monsters of the Midway jersey are way cooler. We'll, than we'll get there. Any Rams jersey. It, it's and second, Kendall just peered over. From where he's sitting at my beer empty beer bottle stash to make sure he was up to par <laughs> with the beers that I'm drinking, so that he could make sure that if I drank this one, he could slam the rest of his life and ask for another one. <laughs> it's how I operate. I just, I can't, it's in my my DNA. Not only does the guy have food jealousy, but he's got beer envy. <laughs> See the thing, they're drinking a fresh beer. It's booze envy. It's a, a lot. Of, a lot of my, and I, I don't hate the Saints, but yeah, a lot of it is like when I break out a when, certain. Triple the normal volume. Every time things like don't go the way of the Saints, like their fan base is the worst. Like they're, they're picketing the Super Bowl. It's <laughs> that's my why thing, they would have been. My thing least. against the Saints fan base, and it's not Jeff. It, it's not Jeff specifically. But it's, fuck you, Jeff. But it's like an overall <laughs> thing. It's like it's like an encompassing. It's like with the Yankees or the Patriots or the yeah. Steelers. It's like it's not Kendall or Mock specifically. It's the fan base as a whole. The Saints have this I'm way about them Kowski. where it's like <laughs> we. It's fair. No, no, Chris is the fan base. Yeah. That's, <laughs> like, that's fair, Kyle. But, like, my thing with, like, the Saints have this mentality to them where it's, like, we're always fucked over, we're the underdog. It's, like, they, they, they act like they haven't won anything ever. Like, they won a Super Bowl, and they're always in the playoffs. Yeah. Not always in the playoffs, but they're, like, regularly in the playoffs. Just, I mean, when was the last time they missed the playoffs? Ah, probably, like, three, actually, I think it was, like, three years ago. Was it? I, mean, I think the year that, I think the year the, the... I think it was the year the Falcons went to the Super Bowl. I'm not sure. Or not the Falcons. I think it was the year the Panthers went to the Super Bowl. I'm trying to think. Panthers won. No, it can't be that long ago. They they like they have on and off spurts of missing the playoffs, but but they play in a very competitive division. They yeah. probably play in the most competitive division in the NFL uh, uh, until this year. That Listen, can't be right. If Uncle Eddie was on the show, I would say Cowboys. It. This can't be right. What? This is trying to tell me that. They made it in 2018 and 2017, but haven't made it since 2013. Yeah, I'm looking at the same thing. They that missed it three right. years in a row. That can't be right. Three, yeah, seven, and nine seasons. No, nah, that sounds right. Wow. They were bad for a few years. So they weren't bad for a few years. They were just defensively terrible for a few years. It's the same thing. No, it's not. Oh, uh, yeah. That was the Rob Ryan era, wasn't it? Nope. Forgot about that. Carl, are the Steelers bad? Uh, Last year, yeah. Can't say that. Because your defense is bad. Yeah, top ten defense. <laughs> Are we going to do this again? So, I happen to look over. Rita's watching Raw. They just debut a new title. Titus O'Neil wins it instantly. He's <laughs> celebrating and he just lost it. What is it? <laughs> What's the title? It's called the 24-7 champion. So, the hardcore title. Yeah. 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 But they can't call it the hardcore anymore because that's, you know, that's far too... Ugh. Anyone can get this belt at any time. They already did this. Uh, turn that off. <laughs> it's a hardcore title. It was Crash Holly that did it the first Robert time. Roode won it, 
I remember Crash Holly fighting, I forget who it was, like in a ball pit at like a Chuck E. Cheese. <laughs> All right, shall we do NBA teams real quick? Uh, what time we got? We're a little over. Uh, I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll go to break. We'll come back. We'll do the NBA teams. We'll do some Jersey stuff. We'll finish out. Everybody's got some fun things to talk about. So we'll be back in 60 seconds here on the PPRN. And now, back to getting sports with Mark on the PPRN radio network. Welcome back to Getting Sports with Drunk. I'm your host, Mr. Cupcake the Riddler, and I'm joined by Dicks. <laughs> God, they're fucking burps. Yeah, my burps are rough. Oh, they're hot. Yeah, Paul gets a lot of good mouth farts. <laughs> if you why mix is, my, is, his mouth nice, my ass, Christ. that's a nice oral flatulence. He's, he's the best burper I know. I mean, in fact, for the most part. Would you consider the worst? I also have the best burger. That's true. Best burps, best burgers. And honestly, you know, look at that. Jesus. The camera can't see it, but it's like every time he, he'll, he'll go in there and it's like, you know, hey, here's here's a three-inch long snot. I actually pulled one out of the car today. Please push that down the cup so I don't have to keep seeing it. I, pushed, I pulled one out of the car today. That um, So I dug in there with my pinky and got it out of the right side. And I felt it. It was, a, it was a, like a triangle almost. I felt it come from my left nostril, and from up in my nasal cavity. Like Those I, are the best, where you just shake it out. It feels oh, like it's yeah. coming you from your feel brain. Like go, right out. Oh, the best. Oh, my God, so feels good. like it's coming from your brain. I don't experience it that often because I have a deviated septum. <laughs> they get broken. Yeah. <laughs> Honestly, it's Kyle's fault. Kyle is a big Kyle's contributor. Fault. Kyle broke his nose right after it was broken. You know, Kyle... What? What? Kyle... He well, he didn't. He kicked off my broken nose spree. <laughs> All right, so let's hear this real quick. So Kyle and I were like, you know, what do you call it? Shadow boxing, Shadow boxing. boxing which you know was would be a lot of fun. We're in high school, you know, like, hey, we're boys. Blah, blah. You know, Kyle has a death perception of a seagull, <laughs> and, and <laughs> pops Going me in the somebody face. Somebody has a depth perception of a pelican. <laughs> right, you know, well, Actually, that's terrible because pelicans do the dive thing. He has the depth perception of a cyclops. No, I would say that he has the depth perception of a blind person throwing axes. <laughs> So anyway, Speaking Kyle, of, there's a new axe throwing place in Middletown. We should all go. Well, there's one right in Wallingford too. The one in Middletown's better. It's <laughs> it's seventy it's seventy five dollars a person. I'd the, go. That would be a, that would be a fun uh, belt thing to do. It's seventy five dollars a person. It's four hours unlimited pizza and beer. Wow. That would be a really fun. And belt they have thing. they have Yingling, Budweiser, hold, hold Bud on, Light, hold on. and Miller Light. Hold on, they provide they provide beer at axe throwing. Yeah. That sounds like a really bad idea. You about to I sound like a waiver. One right? word for you. Two syllables. Okay. Waiver. It still sounds like I'm a really bad... I'm mad that Mock did the tap. Like, you, how old are you, Mock? 27? I was just tapping, like, yeah. I don't know what that means. No, waiver. You, no, you... Waiver. I don't know what that means. What, syllables? No. The, you tap for syllables. I got another waiver. word for you, Mass. Platform, so it's like, like, your name is three syllables. Chris, Mass, C. You clap every, like... Oh, right. I got, I got another word for you, Matt. Did mess. you not, like, attend, I don't know, like, anything? That's not what they taught us. They taught us something much more retarded. What did they teach you? I want to hear this. <laughs> so, for syllables, every time you talk, every time your chin pushes your hand down, that's a syllable. What are you, a basset no. hound? Like, uh, <laughs> <laughs> Let me tell you something. I've had some yawns that are one long-ass <laughs> syllable. <laughs> I'm not kidding. <laughs> yeah! I'm a little wookie in that. Um... Right, Seriously, so that's what they taught us. Real quick, let's do some basketball. We were doing this before. If you guys are just tuning in, um, we were doing. Uh, everyone at the table here has a. What's up, Billy? We're a very various uh, sports fan base here. Hundredth show, so we're just we're just having fun. So uh, various sports fan base. So we did NFL and we did MLB. We'll do NBA. So we have a 76ers fan. Uh, you can say hello when I introduce you. 76ers fan. Hola. We have a Pels fan. Pels, Pels, Pels. We have a Raptors fan. Yeah. No, no. There's only one way to properly introduce the raptor. Give me a raptor sound. Yeah. <laughs> introduce. <laughs> oh my god. I'm more of like a pterodactyl. Yeah, I'll tell you what. Like, like <laughs> Jaguar. <laughs> Kendall, say we have a raptor fan. I will show you how you do this in the future, okay? Oh, oh, oh. That's the raptor sound. <laughs> I was more hoping for him to say I thought he was going to say, we have a raptor's fan. Yeah, that's what I was, and I was going to do it. We have a oh, raptor's that was, fan. That was, that was my bad. Oh, oh. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> we got a bulls oh, fan. Oh, no. We have a Bulls fan. We have a. All right, let's 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 just have this now. <laughs> oh my god! Like, why is this Bulls happening? And Machine Washable, and Mass. Is he a Knicks fan or is he a Rockets fan? Rockets. 
Rockets. Rockets. But that, You're a Rockets fan moving forward. That, End of story. That can't be. Because they have to, all sports have to be all Houston. That's not true. That's not but, true but I, I support all those no, but equally. You, don't, you definitely do not support the Astros more than you support the Mets. You support the Rockets more than you support the Mets. But I don't think so. Yeah, I you think do. if I gave you access to all 82 games of every single team throughout the entire season, I think you would more watch You're more Rockets games. You wrote an article about Houston. But that was all Houston. It wasn't and, just and the it, Rockets. Yeah, but you focused on a lot of Rockets. Uh, because there's a lot of the good thing. Rockets. Here's the thing. If we made a list of your top 10 favorite baseball players ever, regardless of team, I think at least 40% of them would be Mets. You are a Steelers fan because you wanted to be a 280-pound black man. <laughs> you like James Harden more than you like anybody that's ever suited up for the Knicks. No, there's a lot of Knicks I've liked. But not, no, no, you like them for the wrong reason. Yeah, but no, but you, like, <laughs> you like Knicks the same way that I like Corey Brewer Bulls. Well, you why like, can't that be you enough? You like the Knicks the way Jawan Howard won an NBA ring. <laughs> I don't know what that means, the, but that's These funny. sports references are hilarious, but a lot of people are not going to... So here's the deal. That's actually a Hannibal Burris bit. Stand-up comic. Is it really? Yeah, so he, he was talking about how he pitches to the ladies that he was nominated for an Emmy. But then he says, I was nominated for an Emmy the same way Jawan Howard won an NBA championship. <laughs> That's because he was nominated for an, en- an Emmy as a member of SNL. Oh. But he wasn't a successful as- SNL cast writer. Jawan Howard didn't contribute anything <laughs> to that Mavericks team. He pretty much just sat the bench and was like, Mavericks, right? Mavericks? Heat. Heat. That's right, Heat. All right, um, so who is, love who's that. Jeff a fan of? The Knicks. Okay. Kendall. So for the sake of conversation, we'll make you a Rockets fan. Kendall, I think you should just be a Rockets fan. Look, here's the thing. Nobody here, nobody here will shit on you for being a Rockets fan. You're not a bandwagon fan. They haven't won anything. I think you should just be a Rockets fan. I think that you would genuinely invest more into NBA basketball as a Rockets fan than a Knicks fan for three reasons. Here they are. One, you are more in tune with the Houston culture than you are with the New York culture. Two, you're poised to just see more Rockets stuff on social media than you are the Knicks social media because of your in-depth love for Houston hip-hop music versus New York hip-hop music. Fair. And third, the Houston Rockets are on, are on national television more than the Knicks. You're not going to sit down and turn on MSG to watch a Knicks game on a, on a Monday. Well, listen, but when you, right. but when you choose to watch primetime basketball with Mock, the Rockets will right. be on way more than the Knicks. Listen, I, I agree with what you're saying, but another reason is because I don't believe that the MSG network is particularly good. So that's another reason yeah, why SNY I don't... Yeah, but SNY isn't good. SNY is far superior than MSG. Yeah, but that's like... But that's like again, well, not on. to I quote another you. comedian, but like comparing SNY to MSG, it's like MSG is like the got, not going to graduate person in the class of Spectrum students, and SNY is like the valedictorian of that class. SNY is a great program. It's no, a SNY great has good Mets announcers. That's it. We've gotten very off track here. All right. Well, I will Listen, say that the Mets have the best announcers in baseball. Yes. yes now, they do. now they, they didn't. Do. Now they did. Sorry, you guys are unfamiliar with John Sterling. Yeah. Is that what you're telling me? So the Mets. I'm just saying the Cubs yeah, and the White Sox for a while. Actually, he's got John Sterling. Like the Cubs and the times. White Sox, in my opinion, were the, had the best commentating crew for a very long time. Anyway. So, Souls, who's your least favorite and most favorite of the NBA teams outside of the Sixers? Uh, least favorite is the Sixers. Um, outside of the Sixers. <laughs> I know. I'm thinking of choke. Yeah, well, funny. No one laughed. Bulls, least favorite. Okay, um, that's fine. Ooh. I don't give a shit. Why is that, Kyle? It's not. The Knicks are. For Why? obvious reasons. Jeff? Hate all Nick fans. See, I want you to feel sorry for them, but you shouldn't because they did it to themselves. And favorite... Flap them wings, baby. Probably. Flap them wings. No fucking way you're about to say the Pels are your favorite. Flap them yeah, wings. Drew Holiday. He's one of my favorite <laughs> players. <laughs> the fucking and you're one of the worst man. NBA fans. Fucking Drew Holiday was a sixer and I was really mad when they got rid of him. He was an impactful sixer. Yes, he was. He wasn't. He went to game We're seven. We're not conference making finals. this discussion. Machine. My, uh... Huh. They have to say the Sixers now. You I have to. I don't have to. Yes, you do. I don't, I don't have either. to. It's well, a friendship I, I, obligatory. Well, I could say the Sixers as my least favorite. No. Um, hmm. I think my my favorite of the the gathering around the table here would be the Knicks. 
And it's mostly because they're New York. And I, and I like the sad story. I like seeing the team that just gets beat up pretty good and just kind of takes it. <laughs> <laughs> In My least favorite? favorite is Toronto because of Canada. <laughs> All right. Mass? Uh, my least favorite is the 76ers division. Like, <laughs> <laughs> Mass is leading really hard on fundamental <laughs> fanship. Kyle, Kyle just laughs. I, I, don't, I don't have another reason. I really don't. No, but, right, that's fine. Because um, here's bullshit the thing. team. You gave a reason. Yeah. That's what matters. Um, flap favorite those, team. Flap those wings. His favorite well, team is the Chicago Bulls because he met Michael Jordan at a UCF game. And we're done. Moving on. <laughs> Just like that. He was a <laughs> wizard then, <laughs> right, Aaron? Um, least favorite. Sorry, Kyle. Seventy six. Yeah, no, sorry. I would also say the Sixers if I could. <laughs> is your favorite the Knicks? Because uh, well, yeah. you're a Rockets fan, so you yeah, can say the Knicks. You're a Rockets fan for this segment, so you can say the Knicks. We're this giving you a pass. You, by the way. I'm sorry? This I'm benefits gonna... you. Yeah. <laughs> All right. I, 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 I like the Rockets. I like the Rockets. No, lot. you're the Rockets <laughs> fan. You can't, you can't say, say the, the Rockets. Knicks. You're a Rockets fan. Jeff's a Knicks fan. None of us like the uh, Rockets. So you, okay, well, so I was confused by that point. I'm sorry. Okay, <laughs> so, so you're a Knicks it's fan. The same you like the Knicks, you hate the Sixers. Yes, that's All right. All right. All right. Sorry. I was confused. For that. division. Good job. We did it. I think Riddler. Did you not? Oh, yeah. You did no, that. I did not, though. Who do you have? Uh, Toronto would be my favorite because okay. uh, there's always been a player for Toronto that I've always like has been my top five favorite player VC. In, currently in the NBA. Uh, yeah, VC Tracy McGrady, virtual coins. What? Uh, I'm making a two K joke. Okay. He said virtual coins. Oh, okay. It's virtual currency, you ass. It's all the same. Um, Bitcoin. Demar Derozan, Kawhi Leonard. Not Lowry. Serge Ibaka. Not Lowry. No. Fucking yeah. Kyle Lowry is the biggest waste. Um, he's just like, oh, okay. he, he's, uh, he's Peyton Manning. Outstanding in the regular season. Becomes subpar in post. Um, and then my least favorite would be the Pels. Oh, come on. Come on. I, I was. Clap those wings, baby. I liked, I liked it when it was the New Orleans Hornets. I like oh. the New Orleans Hornets more than the Charlotte Hornets. Sure. Although sure. I don't know, it's tough because the Charlotte Bobcats is just terrible. Um, yeah. Hmm. They drafted. Kim I make a petition that we move the Charlotte Hornets to New Orleans and combine them with the New Orleans Pelicans to make one team, the New Orleans Pelicans. They still won't make the playoffs um, <laughs> because they'll be in the West. And then I vote that we get rid of a team in Charlotte altogether, and we. Add a new team. You ready for it? I'm ready. Are you though? I think I think I am. All right. Las Vegas. No. <laughs> the Pittsburgh Platypi. Wow. <laughs> tell you what, I think that's a team in Super Mega Baseball. So let me tell you something right now. If Pittsburgh Platypi became a team, fuck the Bulls. <laughs> fuck them. Bailing out for the Platypi. <laughs> hey, Platypus is my fourth favorite animal of all time. Right. Hey. It's a cool animal. Quick around the horn, everyone's favorite and least favorite animal. <laughs> Saita. That's not an animal. Hey, Actually, God. we'll do that. Riddler's rankings. It wouldn't be a hunter show without Riddler's rankings, so we'll do animals. Uh, anybody care to take a guess as to my number one? Turtle. Turtle. Uh, well, I'll oh. be different than koala. It is, in fact, a lobster. No. My, my, <laughs> other, my only other guess lobster. would be an otter. Ah, but that that's might be two. two. That's number two. So number one is a turtle. Big turtle fan. Turtle slash tortoise. I like turtles more than tortoises, but yeah, I do too. I do too. But I, I combine them into one, all right? Because of, I, I, I can't be picky. The turtle slash tortoise. Number two is the otter. Uh, number three, duck. Nope. Pufferfish. <laughs> the alligator. Not a crocodile. No nope. alligators. I like They're delicious dinosaur. I like the teeth up. That's that's we're going with living animals. Oh yeah. Number four is the platypi. And uh, number five. It's a psyduck. No. Mallard. <laughs> Number five, Henry. I will give here's I will put the wager out right now. I don't have it in cash, so I can't show it. Henry. I will give whoever can guess it at this table, I will buy their beer for the entire month of June. Whatever you guys want. Whatever you want for your beer. Now obviously within reason. So it's like a it's like a six or a four pack of show. But I will buy your beer for the entire month of June if you can guess it. Can I have one hint? Can I ask the hint? 
I'd be curious what this hint would be. Is it a mammal? No. Okay. All right, that means it's a fish. No, no, no. <laughs> so we're, we're, we're going to do it this way because Matt decided to be a dick about it. So now, Matt, you have to guess, and everybody else gets to ask a question. So you get to guess. That was your That's thing. That's interesting. Um, <laughs> Can Kendall go next? <laughs> Unreal. Mock is next. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> and that was Mock's question. Kendall gets more questions. <laughs> Come on, we're on radio. Gecko. No. All right, Mock. Bold, you ask bold guess. Is it a fish? No. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> There's probably more fish than there are rest of animals. <laughs> now we said it's not a mammal, it's right? It's not a mammal, so if it's if <laughs> Good thing I asked that because I almost said a guess. I'm gonna say it's a hawk. Incorrect. What is a hawk? <laughs> Incorrect. Rebecca? Skip right over Kyle. <laughs> when I didn't say we were going on it, Rebecca, it's not a mammal and it's not a fish. You may ask a question and then give an answer. Please turn her mic on. It's on. Does it have to be a yes or no question? <laughs> That's a weird way to ask that. No, you have to a- you have to ask a question. Is it a- yeah yeah the the hint is a yes or no question. Okay, is it green? No. All right, now guess an animal. <laughs> not a mammal, not a fish, no. not grind. Yes or no. Not a fish, a snake. Snakes are very commonly grind. No. I like that. You're welcome. Snake. Red bear. Not a mammal, not a fish, not Gren. What's your question? Is Kyle going last because he knows it? No. (laughs) Kyle doesn't know it. All right. um, Is it amphibian? No. Okay. Crustacean. Throw out the playbook entirely. (laughs) Um, Hmm. All right. uh, Is it a parakeet? No. What's avian there? Be- before Kyle goes, do any of us also have the Facebook video on? No, I don't. No, I don't. Man, so we've had one person hanging with us for a long time. <laughs> Way to go. Oh, never mind. <laughs> Is it a bird? Yes. Ooh. Is it a penguin? Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> well, hey! You pretty much buy his beer anyway, don't you? Yes. <laughs> So actually, this kind of worked out. <laughs> Good job, Souls. Good for you, Souls. Well, it was the cutest animal out of all of them that was left. It's my mom's favorite animal. Oh, I didn't know that. <laughs> no. Um, <laughs> so we have a jersey segment. Yeah. This is going to take a while, so let's do it. Let's enjoy it. All right. Oh, 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 oh. Rebecca? No, no. We start the race. We have time. Rebecca, into the mic. Yes, come on. Rebecca, into the mic. It doesn't matter. This Talk is, into the microphone. It's radio. Break the format show. Throwing it back to the WGCS days. The, the, the bloopers. We'll play the bloopers. We can do that at the end. We do okay, it it's five minutes. We started right, late. It's a, it's we a started four minute, five minute segment. We have, we have time. I just got to plug in the, the flash drive. That's fine. That's fine. All right. We started late. So, Mass, go ahead. All right. This was your idea, right? Yeah. All right. So, this is our top five best and worst sport jerseys so all time. Champagne? Oh, we'll we'll a, get to that. Later. That's a, that's a, we have the second bottle, though. Sure. We'll get to that. Um, <laughs> the second bottle is going to be saved for later. Yeah. Um, that's so, so he can get some loving. That's 200 episodes. 200 what? episodes. What an age. Oh, Go right. ahead, Matt. Um, Yuck. Be- top five, top worst, top best. Yeah. Um, I'll start off my top five. Number five, the powder blue. Well, hold on, hold on. How about instead of doing top five, let's all just kind of go around and just kind of talk really about like, it. And we'll, and we'll like shit on or agree with. Okay. So doing the topic, it gets too. It takes too long. It gets too wordy. Okay. So, so pitch a couple jerseys that you like right at the bat, and then we'll go around from there. San Diego Powder Blues. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. As as your but, favorite, love yeah. them. That's your number one jersey all time, though. No, it's number five. All right. Here's my thing. Well, I shouldn't even say these are in no particular order. All right. I like the powder blue jerseys, but I'm actually way more partial to the dark navy blue jerseys. The new ones. Yeah. Yeah. I, I like, like those. The, a I lot. like the dark blue jerseys that the Chargers wear more. I think it it pops the the. The Bolt logo way more. Thank God they didn't go with any of those new logos. What the uh, the LA Dodgers Chargers? Yeah, that was terrible. Well, they did, and then <laughs> there was such backlash they <laughs> ditched it. They're like, oh yeah, um, let's pretend this never existed. Well, if uh, if we're gonna counter a good one with a bad one, we talked about it in the group text. Those Eagles jerseys <laughs> are fucking terrible. Which one? The, the, the blue, the and, blue yellow? and yellow. Oh, the stripe ones. Oh, the ones with like the V with the stripe. Hey, you know what those were mimicking? Those were actually mimics of the original Chicago Bears uniforms. 
Because the original Chicago Bears uniforms, they used to be navy up top, and they would go to a V, almost like kind of parallel to the nipples, and they would come to a V right right about a li- in line with the nipples. But look at these. These are terrible. They're oh, awful. those jerseys. Yeah, yeah those yeah. are terrible. They're, They're awful. Are these are horrible. Um, we got to give testament to one of the greatest basketball uniforms of all time, if not the best, the Chicago Bulls. Classic. Speaks for itself. I love that jersey. But just the red one? Well, so the, here's the thing, though. The Bulls have a, the Bulls have arguably one of the worst jerseys in NBA history, and that's the St. Patrick's Day uniform. The green Bulls jersey is terrible. But the red jersey is iconic, and, and yeah. it's partially iconic because of Jordan. Not Probably in a large part. I won't take that away. But the Bulls also have a history of having very good jerseys. The black jersey with the red logo. That's the, the one I thought he was talking because I, I like that one a lot. The black jersey with the red lettering with the white outline is very good. But then the classic, hard, the hardwood classic from the 90s, the pinstripe jersey, is also very popular. That's yeah. a very great jersey. The Bulls have always put out pretty good uniforms. Um, well, actually, that's, actually, that's actually the alternate pinstripe jersey. Because yeah. they have a pinstripe jersey, which Matt was just showing me, where it's got red on the inside. And then they have a pinstripe jersey that does not have the red on the inside. It's actually black. Hmm. Black or gray. Kenna, right. Kenna, what do you got for a bad one? A bad jersey? Um, honestly, I know we joke about it a lot, but I hate the Cincinnati Reds, you know, just <laughs> the, their home uniform. The white? No, I take it back. I apologize. I'm talking about their way. The, the, the gray. Right. The, oh, the gray. gray. Sure. The gray is horrible. That is a bad look for that, that uniform. But isn't it, isn't it just gray and it says Reds? No, it's got the big, it's got the C on it. It's just, it does not look oh, good. Oh, that's right. That's yeah, right. It's, a, it's a bad jersey. Like, a team like that should be like, it's a, it's a very classic team. Yeah. It, it should be, you know. You know, I'll combat it with, with another baseball jersey. And again, there's, there's biases involved, and we'll, I'll get past all those eventually. But a, a jersey sticking in the same sport, I actually think that the White Sox <coughs> uh, black jerseys, when they have Chicago spelled out in cursive and white. Yes, those. Are I think that's nice. one of the classier jerseys in MLB. That's a good look. I, I like as that an jersey. alternative jersey. I, I think that's a very. I mean, I, I love their traditional white with the black pinstripes, and then their black jerseys with the 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 the, the black with the white outline of the Chicago and cursive across yeah. the chest. I think that's a very classy jersey. We could laugh at the Chicago uh, White Sox because once back in the nineties they decided to wear shorts for a day for their uniform. That was pretty funny. Yeah, they went oh. back to the nineteen twenties. I didn't that was, know that. Yeah, they wore shorts, and that was when they had the logo that has the really big S with the O in the yeah. top part and the yep. X. Yeah, mm-hmm. that was a real big throwback. Those are those are horrendous. Isn't there a minor league team that plays in those? Could be like the the real short like baseball pants. I forget who it is because I ju- I just saw a picture on Instagram of some team wearing them. Not too well, long. It's ago. crazy because we forget about we think of you know triple A, double A, single A. In in the organization, there is like. There's like a total of like seven different branches. Yeah. Like, uh, actually, I own a hat to the right, Kingsport so Elephant in the room. I mean, Packers throwback jerseys. Fuck them. Terrible. Let's move on. Those are absolutely <laughs> terrible. All right. We're Bumblebee gonna... jerseys. Hate them. I while, we're, while we're on the. I love no, the Bumblebee that's, jerseys. That's my number one most hated jersey. I, like, I, I hate love the Bumblebee jerseys. I hate those it's jerseys. It's so unique. It's so different. If they kept the Steelers gold with the black, there's nothing. There. These are awful. Look at them. They're a travesty. I, honestly, here's the thing. You know what? Fashion guru, no, man. <laughs> you, know, you know why they get a bad rap? And I honestly believe this. You know why they get a bad rap? Because they wear the khaki pants with them. The, the brown. Yeah. If they didn't wear that khaki colored pants with them, if they wore black, I think that people would respond to I them I think they would better. look better. I, I just, I don't like the, no. the way they look. They don't look good. I love them. You got another terrible jersey? It's the only Steelers jersey I own is the Bumblebee. Brett the Red Giants. Right. Oh, those are awful. <laughs> I hate those. Yeah, I don't even know why they wore those. How about, like, all the Jets uniforms? Yeah. <laughs> They're all yeah, terrible. It's a terrible shade of green. I, it, I like it's the not a shade of green. One. That's the thing. The Jets jersey, I've, I've said this a billion times to Kendall. The Jets jersey, it looks like they approached you at the age of four. And they said, hey, at some point in your life, you're going to play for the Jets. This is your jersey. Put it in the back window. Of your mother's sedan, <laughs> and let it sit there till we call you. We want it to get as bleached as possible, and then when you sweat, we want it to be different shades of green. <laughs> it's so fucking ugly, and the new ones are even uglier. They look like Arena Football League jerseys. Yeah, the terrible. 1990 ones are pretty good. I'm curious. The light green with the jet. The Kelly green ones. Yeah. You're talking about the Kelly green ones when they had the jet spelled yeah, out on the yeah. helmet. Those are nice. Yeah, I don't those mind are those. Very nice. Yeah. 
Just like the Eagles. Like when it had like the yep. bright green. I like we'll that. We'll get the, well, I, I'll say it so Matt doesn't have to. The Rams throwbacks. The the royal blue with the yellow. Yeah. Those are nice. The, but I hate the blue with the white. Yes. That's, I hate that. That's a real, and real I, it's an unfortunate I liked because it the first I think time that's they what did they're going to go back to. I liked it the first time they rolled it out a couple years ago on uh, Thursday Night Football, like as the color rush. Yeah. And since then, I've kind of gotten... I hate the color rush. rush. I think color rush is the dumbest thing. Uh, I love some of them. Well, no. You color rush is dumb. I you agree can't hate it because one of the jerseys you just said is your favorite came from color rush. That's where the Chargers Navy Blue jerseys came No, no, no. I understand that. But the color rush isn't true. That's the thing. Color Rush isn't true. Color Rush should be outside of black and white. Every team has a color in their arsenal. A that's, secondary that's, color. Yeah, yeah even it's highlighted. Some, some, of them, some of them are a third color. Right. But black and white, and then there's another color in every team's arsenal. Yep. That should be your Color Rush jersey. Like, Jacksonville should not have brown? The Ravens should be wearing all purple. The Saints yeah. should be wearing all gold. Jacksonville should be wearing all teal. What that what are there? I thought the black. No. Oh, I thought the Saints ones were no. The no, they were white. They were either all white or all black. <laughs> the Ravens have worn all black for their color rush jerseys. Yep. Jacksonville was all brown. Was all, like the Lions were all black with they blue were letters. Mustard. The Lions should be their blue. Lions blue or all silver. Yep. It should be a color color rush. No, the Steelers ones are awesome. I like those. The black. It's just. But they shouldn't be black. It should be yellow. They should be yellow. I can agree with that. Can we talk about the black jerseys real quick? Arizona's black jerseys, like their alternates, sharp. are pretty crisp. Those are sharp. Big fan of Seattle's color rush. <laughs> the live green. Tell you what, though, but Seattle's new jerseys are some of my least favorite jerseys in all sports. Yeah. I hate the neon colors. You know, it's a cool jersey. Remember in the 80s, 90s in the blue? The blue with the silver yeah. helmets? The be- that was the best when the Seahawks connected in the back. They connected yeah. in the back. Yep. That was a cool uniform. Yep. You know what jerseys I really love? They're two from like the early 2000 baseball era. Florida Marlins, like 2003 World yeah. Series. Yeah, that was an awesome year. The Arizona uniform. Diamondbacks. Yes. The yeah. Arizona Diamondbacks, in my opinion, are the best Tell you baseball what. jerseys to ever. Fuck those clubs both those years. <laughs> we know it's crazy, too. I'm a big fan, too, of the St. Louis Cardinals when they used to wear the sleeveless jerseys with the red t shirts, like the, the red yeah. spandex shirts underneath them. When those, I, I thought, and the Rockies still do it. I think the that's. Black and the. Yeah. yeah, it's so sharp where they wear the sleeveless, yep. almost like a vest, like a jersey vest. I think those are so sharp looking. Good in luck. my opinion, I think the Diamondbacks, 2000, early 2000s, are the best jerseys in baseball history. Wow. You know what's crazy, too? For for them and the Diamondbacks, what a very short period of time those uniforms were worn. I don't like the maroon. Like, those are just whack. Yeah. yeah. I get it. Like, it's a desert type color. Again, we'll go to the, the bias thing. I think, I, I personally, I think the sharpest jerseys in all of football are the Monsters of the Midway Bears throwback jerseys. Yep. That's on my list. With the, right with the orange the, uh, numbers. The, the navy blue, the dark navy blue with the orange block numbers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, yep. it's, a, it's a cool uniform. I think, and then they have the orange stripes on the shirt where, the, you know, they always have the stripes on the sleeve. I think those are some of the sharpest jerseys in football. I Cowboys like, jerseys are vintage. I personally like it when they have the white lettering, but I don't hate the Monsters of the Midway. The white letters are just... You like that one? Yeah. Yeah. So I, I but get, Bears know, jerseys are some of my favorite. The yeah. sake of being biased, I love the blue, like the Giants home jerseys. Because the, they're the classic. Blue. Yeah, it, it's just a simple... Except I like the when they had Giants spelled out on the helmet more than the NY. You know what's funny? There's an age difference who, who care about stuff like that, so... Rita's father, Dave Sanderson, he tunes in a lot. He's been, the, been on the show before. The original jersey with the NY is like the very classic. Yeah. He prefers that. When they switched the, the Giants, which the Giants. is like late late 70s, yeah. 80s, early 90s, hates it. But really? us, us as kind of like the younger generation, when they switched back to the NY, the Giants to us is so cool. It's, it's, the, I, it's a throwback like it, for us. Yeah. Just because of how they it just To me, it, it looks better on the helmet. It's cool. The Giants and the line underneath yeah. it. Also, real quick, I think one of the best I think one of the best logos in the NFL, I love, absolutely love when the Buffalo Bills wear their white helmets with just the yes. red bills. Yeah. The red Buffalo. Red, yeah. No oh, outlines with just the red Buffalo. Awesome. It's, I think it's – and I also – I'm also a big fan of the old Patriots logo. The New yeah. England Patriots hiking the ball. I'm a big fan of that. The really? Drew Bledsoe era. You know what I don't like? Sure. The mid two thousand Bill jerseys, the navy blue. Oh, yeah. really? That's one of my favorite uniforms. Really? The navy Parrish. blue with the I, red, I like red the helmet. Light blue and the red. That's the Roscoe Parish era, right? Yeah, yep. that's one of my I, favorite I uniforms. I forget that the time frame. Marshawn Lynch was drafted right at the end of those, yep. right? Yeah, he, he, he wore Marshawn that. Lynch jerseys yep. with those. In the navy I forget blue. the time frame, but the old Bucks. 
Or in cream sickles. Cream sickles. That's on my worst list. I love those. That's what I, I mean. They're them. terrible. The bucket in your head, the, the knife yeah. in his mouth. Like he's, I love them. He's like trying to seduce you. <laughs> hey. Hey, baby. Well, we want to talk throwbacks before we, you know, don't get too stagnant on things. But, I mean, I think it's fair to say even those, you know, you guys that aren't NBA fans can look it up. I know Kendall knows what they are. Mock, you should. Mass, I don't know if you know, but the old the old school Nuggets jerseys. Yeah. The light the, blue? The, no, no, not the light blue. Not I, the I like the white blue, though. The old school ones, the white ones oh, with like the, the, city, the, the rainbows, mountain. the rainbow. Yeah. Yep. Those are oh, Those are cool. Those I are do really like the cool. light blue ones, though. And Mass showed it, too. I, the, the best throwback jersey in all of basketball at this point in time is the Raptors. It, it is it, classic. It got so much flack for it when they first released it, but it is such a classic jersey now. I didn't realize it was really that much flack. I don't know. Yeah. Well, I, when I they first like came it. out, because it was too bold. cartoonish. Oh. Yeah, too cartoonish and too bold. Because it, 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 it took the jersey... And it made the logo. It made the the mascot of the team the centerpiece versus the logo. Right. I, I got you. Okay. You know, in my opinion, one of the best basketball jerseys of all time is Seattle SuperSonics. Oh, one hundred percent. Least favorite jerseys of all time, and I know I'll get shit for it from somebody in this table. I fucking cannot stand those silk bullshit Seventy Sixers jerseys that AI wore. They them. were so fucking ugly. They were like they were the they those professional NBA jerseys were like the same. St- Material that the screen print bullshit jerseys <laughs> you would buy it like Bob's would be made out of. I hated them so much. Can we, can we talk about uh, how bad these Astros jerseys are? Oh, I love those Astros jerseys. That's a classic. I, mean, I, those I think these are atrocious. They're ugly, but they're good. I mean, that's that's there's Astrodome certain, era. There's a certain point where ugly becomes nostalgic, and then it becomes good. Yeah, they were nostalgic for me. Time. Like for me, like that 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 kind of falls into like the bumblebee thing. Like even if you think like, I don't, I can't think that they're ugly because of, they're so nostalgic. Again, like without not getting too stagnant in sport, one of the best jerseys in all of sports, the Chicago Blackhawks. Yes, it's yeah. been virtually unchanged since unchanged they've been, forever. Since, it's been unchanged since the twenties. In fact, do you have the thing that? Well, you had the thing, the banner of the changing logos, but not the the, yeah. the jersey change. But I mean, it's kind of you know, it goes hand in hand. Sort yeah. of you know, the logo may change, but the uniform remains it's the same. It's just become more. Like, it's essentially you've you've essentially gone from analog to high definition. Yes. Yeah. We're right. gonna stay in hockey though, and talk about how bad the flying V for the Vancouver Canucks was. Yeah, this was a terrible jersey. Oh my Ooh, god! Nice. Yeah, bad. these are really bad. I know they weren't like a major jersey for them, but like the movie Anaheim Mighty Ducks jerseys are my. No, that was a, that was a very big part. That was their initial jersey. Those are the best jerseys of all time. The greatest yeah. jersey of all time my is opinion. the Tune Squad jerseys. Kyle, I'd like to go on the record and say that's a terrible movie. <laughs> Nine, Nineteen people on here would disagree with me. You know why? You know why I can't say they're the best jerseys because. The, they wore the white jerseys in the movie, and that was what inspired the team. And then they did the white and the teal. But the best jerseys were the purple ones, and they didn't wear them enough. I the like Blackhawks the jersey, I think I think you could look it up. I don't know. Someone could look it up if they want to. You can go on and, and Google best jerseys of all time. I think the Blackhawks would finish top ten in a lot of articles. If you could find, like, a Wisconsin article... <laughs> That might refute that. <laughs> sure. All right. First one. I've uh, also been, I've also, you know, and this is a unbiased part of it, but I think a lot of teams in the Blackhawks division have very good jerseys. I mean, the Predators do a really good job incorporating the yellow and, and making it not too bold, but making it right. The, the wild logo is fantastic. Having that sunset over the pine trees with the moon inside the bear silhouette's head. That's a beautiful logo uh, on some very nice jerseys. The Blues also have a very good logo. With just, it's simple. It's just it's just yeah. a music note with wings coming off of it. Um but I think the I think one of the best logos in all sports is the Flyers. I think the Flyers have one of the best logos in all sports. I also think the Red Wings have one of the best logos in all sports. <coughs> you guys finished top 10 for Esquire. Well, it's a, I always like the uh Esquire after Labor Day. The old, the old New York Rangers logo with the Statue of Liberty. Mm. I always like that a lot. No, it's a good logo. I like that one a lot. Um, there's some, there's some, there's some really terrible hockey jerseys out there, though. Some absolute. Ter- I mean, the Atlanta Thrashers jerseys were terrible. There was a really bad Coyotes one that I'm thinking of. Yeah, I know exactly. What you're like about. the polygon. Yeah, late '90s. That was terrible. Um. 
the old the old old Avalanche jerseys were awesome. Look up the old Colorado Avalanche jerseys. Those were really good. Show those around the horn to everybody. The Whalers. Uh, yeah, the Whalers. The Whalers were had a good logo. Um, the Hurricanes logo. It's just it's average. It's what you get out of it. Um, this this right here. Show show this to everybody. This was one of the best hockey jerseys. You know what's great? That Kendall could just pull it up on that giant TV over there. <laughs> yeah, but you know what would happen? He would do that and we would lose audio. <laughs> no, no. Just, just, Kendall just also continue. won't. But that's what the jerseys look like. They're, oh, they're awesome. Those are such cool jerseys. Which, is it the NBA that does like the, the camouflage uniforms? Some do. You know who does a lot of Not camouflage? A lot of, and MLB does this. The San Diego Padres specifically. Yeah. I know have they do, but did, didn't the Knicks have them? Oh yeah, well, and they know, were some awful. teams do. The 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 big thing. So like, every sport kind of has their thing. So like, hockey doesn't really do it with their jerseys. They do it. Every organization has special things, and they they put it on their warm ups. Yeah. The NFL does breast cancer awareness stuff. They they incorporate pink into all their stuff. You get your one day of cleats. Yep. The MLB does camo. They do a lot of camo, and they do pink on Mother's Day. The NBA is really big for whatever reason in Hispanic Month. Yeah. They, they do like El Heat, Los Bulls. <laughs> Which is very funny. That was such a funny way to pronounce it. They, El, El Heat. El Barto. <laughs> All right. Do we, oh, well, Red Baron's getting up. I was going to say. Well, let, wanna... let's, let's, let's go through. Well, well, he's going to take a piss. Let's go through and let's rank some of like the most iconic teams. Like, well, not rank them, but like, let's go through and talk about some of the most iconic teams. Like, what do you guys think about the Lakers? In in terms of what, like their their oh, design, their design, their, their jerseys, their lo- the color scheme, the logo. It, I think it's classic. It's it's classic, and it's funny because it's also very unique, like that that purple and yellow combo. Well, for a long, t- but the, the thing outside of being unique for a long time, the Lakers are the only team, not a long time, but for an, a, a good amount of time, the Lakers were the only team. Still, should remember this. They were the only team that didn't wear white jerseys. Really. Their white jerseys, remember this, Souls? It was when Shaq was there, right? Mm-hmm. Their white jerseys were actually their secondary jersey. They wore yellow at home and purple on the road. Yeah. And they were the kind of team to do that. Just like the Cowboys were the the Cowboys were the first team to really initiate the wearing their color jerseys at home versus the white jerseys at home. Before that, a lot of teams wore the white jerseys at home. And the Cowboys were like, we want to wear blue at home. And they started wearing blue at home and mm-hmm. everybody else followed suit and started wearing colors at home. And it's funny now because, especially in in uh, football, where the home team just kind of picks what they like. Just for example, like the Giants, just because they play at home doesn't mean they're wearing blue. Like right. there's times they wear white. It's they just kind of pick. And that's kind of how it goes to sports now. Their well, stuff got stopped up at the dry cleaners. But I mean, wear the different jerseys. Ba- that day. Baseball's not that way. Like you'll never see the Yankees wear the their gray at home. Right. You know, it's it just it's interesting. The White Sox do it. The White Sox will wear the black at home. Really? Sometimes, yeah. They'll wear the black with the white pants. Like, the white will be incorporated to it. Yeah. But, um, like, what about the Celtics? Like, I think the Celtics, when they wear the the green jerseys with the all black letters or the or the uh, white jerseys with the gold outline and the black number, I think those are some of the most horrendous looking jerseys. Yes. Like, just the, the classic green with the white letters and the white with the green letters, I think that's the way to go. A lot of times, to me, the, the green doesn't look great. Like, the, the Eagles are, I think because it's a darker green, but, like, that, that Jets-Celtics green, to me, is just terrible. I think the Celtics have one of the most unique logos, though. Yeah. Very iconic, very yeah. easily identifiable. I mean, I think most sports logos are easily identifiable, but I think like Celtics is very well known. The the Celtics one is is one that you could show someone that doesn't watch sports, right? And they could, oh, that's the Boston Celtics, right? Exactly. You know? Yep. Like the Yankees, yeah. Like the Red Sox, like the Steelers, things like that. Another team, yep. What about um? We go through some other ones, just some other popular ones at the time. We we covered Giants, we covered Jets. Um. How about the Bears? What do you guys think? Team? Well, hold on. What do you guys think about the Steelers with the one, the logo on the one side of the helmet? I know it's that's how it's always been. Do you like it? I don't hate it. I, I mean, I guess I'd rather it be on both, but I, it doesn't. It would look weird bother me. Both. But but well, it would only look weird on both because you're so used to it on one yeah. side. But again, like as the viewer, you only see one side of the helmet anyway. 
Right, but when you yeah. see the side without the sticker, yeah, it looks weird. What's going on over there? I don't know. So I was moving a, a bag. <laughs> I was like throwing up or something. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I like the throwback steelers more than I do today. I like the big block letters. Remember they used to wear a, a uh, black jersey with a yellow helmet and yellow yep. letters? They only wore it for like three or four years, then they retired it. I didn't mind it, though. I think it was kind of cool. Yeah, but you love all terrible jerseys. That's not true. Just most of them. How did we not talk about the Houston Oilers jerseys when we were talking about best jerseys? I was going to say, I was going to say, worst jerseys, I'll fight you. <laughs> <laughs> You're talking about a city, man. You, ever, you know how much he loves the Rockets? That's right. <laughs> I got one that we forgot about, but I think it'll perk, perk up a, a certain orange-dressed individual over there. What about the Ray Allen Bucks jerseys? Um, with the huge stag on them? Those are awesome. Just pull those up, Matt. Show those to the mark. What are these? Uh, p- just type in Ray Allen Bucks. Throwbacks. I don't, I don't know what they'd be under. This thing? Yeah. Those are those are sharp jerseys. Alright. There you go. It's good when you hold it right behind the pole. <laughs> Pillar. Pillar. I do like those. Yeah. Like that's what that's what actually kind of inspired the Raptors jerseys, but the Raptors went in a more cartoony fashion. But the Raptors jerseys are so good, especially on the purple. Ugh, love them. What do you think about the Kyle? Let's see. What do you think about the um the like the Jason Kidd Vince Carter era Red Nets jerseys? No, not about them. Those should be just demolished. <laughs> <laughs> uh, do we want to go into bloopers? Yeah, so uh, I'll say that. Can you get that? Are you, is that set up and ready to go? I'm going to try to set up right now. I'm trying to I gotta, I gotta pull a USB. Try to figure out which one I'm going to pull. So, like, should I not start introducing it? Hmm? Here. Email it to me right now. You told me not to email it to you. Email it to me right now. So, anyways. Here. here, give it to me. Or Mass will email it to me. Well, that kind of fucks up because I was the, the segue. So doing that was going to be the mask thing, but now you can't do that because you can be occupied. What? Can so why it. can't that go on your work computer? I don't want to answer it. Oh my god. All right, anyway. What's, what's this email that I'm saying? Are, are you telling me that many teachers at your elementary school are watching adult films on that computer? Yeah, are you going to tell me right now? I watch porn on Ashley's teacher computer all the time. Valerie, wait. <laughs> Never mind. I... I'm a fan of a scene that got shut up by the Astros. We can say that out loud. They can email us. <laughs> oh. They're going to whisper. This guy's been here all this time. Sold any other jerseys that you care to weigh in on? What about the sky blue Philly jerseys with the maroon logo? I'm a big fan. I like the old school better than the new school. Yeah. The, the new the ones are just kind of plain. Have you guys ever wear, worn all red jerseys with like no. a white logo? How about that uh, Mets cheap knockoff logo, the Yankees logo? Just whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> what? what are you saying? It's, I actually, I really well, let's hate, hang the Y a little more. I really lower. hate the Mets jerseys with the, like the darker blue and black. Yeah, where the orange pops out. I yeah. just like those. What do you think about those, Red Baron? Uh, you know, there's not really a lot of Mets jerseys I dislike. I mean, I, I like kind of like so all you're of them. Homer. Well, no, well, I just. What do you think about the throwback Rockets jerseys? Uh, the yellow. The yellow. I mean, I uh, the Kim Elijah one jersey. I like the other ones. The what Steve Francis one. The, oh, the blue ones with the <laughs> white, the thick white pinstripes that had the rocket going through the chest. Those were terrible. I like those. Oh, those are so bad. Old school Magic jerseys were nice. The T Mac jerseys. T Mac back to Shaq. Those what, the Dwight Howard ones sucked. Mm. Very plain. Yep. Yeah. I'm also a big fan of the Baltimore Royal jerseys. I like the orange. I like their stadium. Their stadium is a blast to be at. All right, uh, we're gonna attempt to play it off uh, the email, and if it cuts out, then we'll download it. But so we have we have two bloopers here. We 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 broke a book. We have a, a, a <laughs> paying tribute to Kyle. <laughs> 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 yeah, because, because how could you not? All right, well, let's talk about this. So, Toronto Blue Jays are pretty good too. So, Matt, you want to throw the headphones on? Yeah, you're gonna need the headphones. So, uh, our Producer assistant slash well, our, our main producer. <laughs> no, a producer's assistant. She's a producer's assistant as well as a good friend of all of ours, despite the shitting. 
But one Rita slash Rebecca Sanderson was nice enough to compile uh, two blooper reels from our 100 shows, 99 shows. And um, hopefully the Red Baron can get those going. But a, a big shout out to, to Rita. Uh, 100 shows and counting, and none of them would have been possible without her. When we were back in the, the old school days of recording on random fucking get together afternoons, Rita was the one that was editing the show and pulling the sound bites out that didn't work and, you know, buffering the sound so that things would sound good so we could post them to Facebook and still doing a lot when, you know, the editing of our, our profane language for Podbean and, and things of that nature. She, she's she been a very large part of our show. She operates the GoPro when we go on our tours. <laughs> Podbean doesn't like it when we say fuck? No, nah, it, it was more... um. <laughs> Podbean doesn't like it when we say bleep. <laughs> it, I mean, we we edited early on. Um, Cause we were just trying to we we're trying yeah. to like grow, kind of like we we weren't sure what was needed. Should I just you know? chuck this at her? No. But uh, but on the other side, besides doing all the production work, drives us home. Well, no, yes, drives you and Kendall home. <laughs> well, well, we were in Hamden. The last time she drove me home, I blew out my hamstring. <laughs> I'm uh, sorry. What? <laughs> that was so funny. <laughs> We're going to have to hear that story. Yeah, we'll get into that later. That was so but funny. <laughs> needless to say, needless to say, Rita is as much of a part of the show as the six of us assholes that bless you with our presence every week. And it, it couldn't be done without her. So a round of applause for Rita. Happy 100 to Rita. We appreciate everything she does for us, even if we'll never show it again. Kyle, give us some Trump. <laughs> no, I'm not. Come on, one line. Pretty mad there's, there's, Come on, give us some Trump for Rita. You're great. <laughs> thought for sure he was going, you're fired. <laughs> thought for sure. All right, so Red Baron, blooper reel. Uh, shout out to Souls. We need to pause just for a moment. Kyle, can you readjust your microphone? Just off the side. Some heavy breathing right into it. <laughs> so, uh, welcome. Just so, don't, just kind of talk a little bit off the side. Don't you have to be. This is your technical update provided by the Red Baron. No, 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 no. <laughs> I'm Mark. I'm the man. Nope, Nope. Kyle. Nope, nope, nope. (sighs) We had it down. (laughs) Damn it, Kyle. Just not here. Fired. And it threw everything (laughs) off. He's doing six shots. I'm your hostess, Cupcake the Riddler. (laughs) Yer. What are you you doing over there? I'm smiling. (laughs) (laughs) Listen, I'm an ordinary guy. You're not just an ordinary guy. You're extraordinary. You know, the difference between ordinary and extraordinary... Is that little extra? (laughs) (laughs) Nerds. Hold on. Hold on. Just quiet for a second. (laughs) Hold on. All right, we can use that. We can use that. (laughs) Be sure to find us on Facebook and... (laughs) Hold on. I can't even talk. (laughs) (laughs) Right on the microphone. (laughs) <laughs> Let's go to me. <laughs> All right, Paul. Well, I can't go to Kyle. Kyle? Right, I got it. I got it. I got it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, anyway, no. We're, we're, we're just rolling. <laughs> we're, we'll clean it up after. Hi, I'm the man of many names. I'm getting tortured. <laughs> I'm the man it is. Many, 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 many. Tell me one. Good to go. Kyle, just go. Hey, it's the man of many names <laughs> from getting sports <laughs> with drunk. Yeah, just stop. I'm stop laughing. Yeah, I did it for a reason. So who's muted? Just everybody but Kyle? I'll, I'll mute. <laughs> I was pausing for a reason. <laughs> That's why I did it. Hey. Hey, it's K Soul from Getting Sports with John. And you're listening to the PPRN Radio Network. You're fired. I like it. Yeah, send that one in. <laughs> send that one in. Why is this going on? Okay? Just do it. Just let it be. Okay. 
<laughs> Milwaukee. Shout out to Mike and Dion. Just a, a portion. I mean, if we can ever tell you the, the amount of, of sound bites we have from Souls, we, we could go on. Uh, we got one more uh, blooper. It's kind of. Now, this one is funny because when you're listening to the show, I mean, it, it's human to, you know, you, you cough, you sneeze, you sniff. But when we were kind of just specifically podcasting, we wanted to cut out a lot of it. But this blooper is really... Can I, can I explain it really uh, quick? Go ahead. The reason I did it was first out of frustration. I really didn't intend for this to be like a, a, a thing, like a blooper reel. But then I was bored and it became a thing. Because in the beginning, like you said, I had to cut out everything. It had to sound really, really good. And so I just kept all of the noises. So this is just noise. I hope, it came I hope out this is to like a song. No, it's like I, take on me. <laughs> we know, we know, we know, we know, no, we know. But I, I do want to say this: if I had nice more, catch. thank you. If I had more time, you would each have your own like reel of noises that you make because I can identify who is sniffing, who is sneezing, and who is coughing. <laughs> That's Mark is always tapping. Jeff's always like grunting. Jeff has a cough. Mark has a cough. Kyle has a lot of the. <laughs> Oh, mass oh. munches a lot. Yeah, yeah, but right into the I, microphone. I don't, I, I don't have so, those, Chris, because I didn't have to nitpick through these shows. So nice. mine would pretty much all be burps. <laughs> a lot of burps. Yep. <laughs> a lot so of we'll play this one. It's about like three minutes or so. So it's a lot of sniffing. So people listening, just be prepared for a lot of. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> 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 Rainbow's <laughs> <laughs> had a lot of like really good career defining moments, but like, yeah, for me, like his murder. <laughs> that he, he got away with. <laughs> <laughs> That's the song, and it's great because I don't think anything else. Wow. I can bullshit as long as I'm long, so we're just gonna cut to the end. Ian, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, motherfucker. Yeah. <laughs> Who was that? That's Kyle. <laughs> was it? Yeah, yeah, we found yeah. out today. No, that was going to be my guess. <coughs> um, yeah, he's <coughs> white and running. under 6'2". <coughs> oh, sorry. You all right over there? <laughs> was Jeff not here so you had to cough Dude, a lot? Yeah. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> I miss him. That one looked like it hurt. <laughs> You're... Nice. Please press it closer. <laughs> See what he has. <coughs> They they really made it a focus to defense. They they were gonna be um, consistent. Wait, Jeff, what is it? Yeast. All right, <laughs> and we are coming down yeah. in three, two. I forgot about that. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> um. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. Jesus. <laughs> wow. <laughs> <laughs> Made me laugh. <laughs> One. Cock. And the red bear. <laughs> no. <laughs> you know, they put it together. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> so. Fuck off, man. <laughs> 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 It's amazing. <laughs> so many snips. Yeah. And oh. the three teams are ooh, nice. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> Get down, babe. Was all me? A lot of burps are you. <laughs> 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 and we are coming down in three, two, one. For me. <laughs> nice. Sorry. <laughs> oh. 
important. <laughs> and we're coming down one in three one <laughs> and that, that's about it. a lot of noises. Uh, is, and that's just a tiny portion of the stuff we only had time to. Rita, I mean. Rita, that was incredible. Again, uh, like we said before, none of this is possible without the services, the legal services, <laughs> of one Rita Reed. Uh, Marky Salmon and Maroney. <laughs> <laughs> Tell him you mean business. <laughs> What's the, what's the, I, it's my money and I want it. J.G. Wentworth. J.G. Wentworth. J.G. Wentworth. Yeah. J.G. Wentworth. 877 Catch Now. If, uh, that, that's the oh. first 200th show blooper reel right there. If, um, if we have a quick minute, just yeah. real quick, if we could go around, we, we can, let's start with Kendall. Ooh. Just past 100 episodes, like your favorite thing that's happened on the show. Oh, on the show. Or, or like, you know, while recorded, whatever. It, around um, the show. Uh, you know, we've had a we've had a lot of funny things that has happened uh, when we were recording. You know, back in the GDH Woodworking Studios day, uh, Greg, who was our gracious host, we recorded literally in a wood shop. Yeah, and you uh, know, actually, not to interrupt you, sorry, but uh, Greg came over to uh, Kyle Kyle's and mine's residency this past weekend to give a quote on a, a woodworking job. He actually brought me the Pilsner Urquell that I left there. Are you serious? That mine brought me from the Czech Republic, and I drank it in the yard. Oh my god! It was terrible. It was so old. That's a couple of years. Yeah. There was one time he and his brother were coming back from a, a, a job. They, I don't know where they were. They were in New York. I the think. New York thing. And we're trying to record our show, and they had to come in. They had to do some work. They had to do like some some grinding or whatever. So we had to stop our recording. Oh, that's right. For like fifteen minutes. So we didn't want to stop the the recording, so we just we just bullshitted for fifteen minutes. We just were kind of just yeah. bullshit. So we had to cut out literally like fifteen to twenty minutes of just unusable like audio. <laughs> just just ah, oh. those were the good old, good old days. We had to put our microphones up on cigar boxes just to yeah. get into our, the height of our where we were sitting before we had studio space here at PBRN, <laughs> the glory days. Souls, there's so <laughs> many. Which time when yeah, I threw up? These hurt. <laughs> oh, the best, that was puked no, a lot. No, no, no. The best throw up was when we were at Maple in Jeff's old room after he had moved out. And Kyle did the grow shot and threw up in his hands on his way to the bathroom. <laughs> that was the best vomit. Kyle was, I, forget, I think it was called the cloudy, like the rainy, the rain cloud. Was it Frank's like cheese? That. No, 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 no. It was like, what was it called? Oh, the spicy rain <laughs> cloud. I made him one with... It was vodka, Bailey's oyster sauce, yeah. and hot oh. sauce. It was a spicy rain cloud. Kyle oh. took it and just threw up in his hands as he ran to the bathroom. <laughs> That's so I, bad. I think my favorite Kyle one, though, it was the same day we brought Rita the uh, bacon banana milkshake. <laughs> that was a good one. <laughs> but Kyle, we, we, ate at, we ate at Five Guys. And uh, we, get, we get to the studio. This was in Hamden. And Kyle's just kind of like pacing. I'm like, what's going on? He's like, follow me to the bathroom. <laughs> so me and oh, Kendall the, follow him. I forgot him, about this. And he vomits so violently. Oh, yeah. I have it on video. It's hilarious. <laughs> Mass? Um, Thanksgiving <sighs> shot. No, Thanksgiving shot was so not a good time, ever. and I don't want to remember that. Your first show? First show was a pretty good one. Um... Last week when Baron and I showed up and nobody was here, trying to figure that out on the fly was pretty interesting. The Red Baron's going to miss mine, and it was supposed to be something special for him. Ugh. Sit your ass down, bitch. Um, <laughs> November 19th, that show, that was a pretty good one. Because nobody had any idea what was going on. That was the night of the rams Chief game where I was freaking the fuck out. I proposed the next night. So I was freaking the fuck out, and I just got hammered that night. So that was and a lot of fun. Didn't answer my text. That was that too. But that was also the night that Souls threw up violently in the bathroom. That was the exact same night. 
all comes full circle. There's just so many. I mean, the Chinese food grow shop. The Ooh, Chinese classic. food grow shop that that Mark and I. What? So we did a gross shot for Kendall. It was after because he lost the Getting Sports with Drunk fantasy football yeah. pool. And the other one. <laughs> <laughs> so Mock and I at the Hamden studio sat in a fucking three-by-two bathroom with a blender <laughs> and made a gross Chinese I food shot. I took uh, some General Tso's chicken, a couple oh. pieces of shrimp. One of the worst things I've ever drank. It was, it, was or, And or ate. Did you <laughs> drink it all? Cognac no, and 100 no. proof vodka. It smelled so bad. And yeah. I'm not a proponent of any like Chinese food or anything like that. So Would it, it have was... made me throw up? Yeah. Probably. Yeah. I, I smelled it and gagged. Right, Actually, great. I went into the bathroom for four seconds <laughs> and gagged. <laughs> Kyle <laughs> opens the door. It's like, no! <laughs> <laughs> Riddler, what is yours? Um, uh, You know... It's funny. I think back. There's been so many great moments, and but I'll get emotional on it. I think the the my favorite moment was I don't remember which show it was, but it was in January of 2018, and it's when we were in the wood shop. Um, I remember because we always when we were at the wood shop, uh, Souls and I would usually and Mock would convene at Kendall's house, and we would ride to get there, yeah. and Jeff would meet us and whatever, and. I had gone through with what what I thought at that point in time was the worst thing I could go through at that moment in time. And about an hour later, we got to the wood shop and we started recording The Drunkies. Yeah. And it was easily the 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 best segue into realizing kind of like what was important in life. And that, you know, not to get sentimental and and bullshitty, but you know the, the 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 sound bites that Rebecca posted really kind of like made a test of it. That's what this is about. It's not a yes. It's a hundred shows of putting together. You know, one to two to three hours <laughs> of, of of sports talk and bullshitting and putting our own twist on stuff. And and but really, it's just it, it's you break it down. It's, it's a group of friends that times have changed where we don't have the availability that we used to in high school and college, and. This is a guaranteed way that we've been able to get together at least once Every a week. week to get together, to see how each other's doing, to talk, to reminisce, to bullshit, and, and make sure things haven't changed. And that's what it's been. It's been a hundred weeks of that. And that's that's what it's meant the most to me. Is that it, it's it's always it's a guaranteed shot at seeing your friends. And don't toast these yet. Mass has one thing to toast that goes along with that. Oh, quick thing. My favorite is when I predicted the Ligier Blunt. <laughs> <laughs> Way to fuck your ruin it, Sol. Yeah, a year in advance. <laughs> but Mass also, uh, go ahead. So, I'm happy to toast. You guys are, sorry Jeff's not here, but he's still also invited. You guys are all coming to my wedding. So, here's to that. <laughs> <laughs> Kyle's got to close it. <laughs> uh, um, and are, I'm all, you, are you getting married on a Saturday? Yes. Kyle can't make it. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm also happy to announce that I have two of my groomsmen, the first two. Cheers to Riddler and Red Baron. Salute. Cheers to 100 shows, guys. <sighs> that was just as bad as the first one. <laughs> <laughs> God, that was still the first one. <laughs> all right. Well, we're about out of time here. We hope that you guys that have stuck with us for all 100 shows have been satisfied and those of you who've tuned in somewhere between one and 99 have been just as satisfied there's a hundred more to come if not more after that we'll always be here uh can't guarantee it's gonna be mondays it's kind of been all over the fucking place but for the time being it's mondays from eight or eight ish to eleven ish on the pprn radio network machine worlds can they find us be sure to find us on facebook and instagram at getting sports with drunk Twitter is GSWD underscore four. Make sure to use the hashtag GSWD for all your daily uses, whether it's getting married while one of your boys is working or <laughs> just forgetting what champagne tastes like. <laughs> Subscribe on Podbean, iTunes, iHeartRadio, Google Play, and Spotify. Where you find podcasts and internet radio shows, you find us. Now, I'm hoping, I, I teased it kind of last week, but I'm still in the works with something else that I haven't told you guys about yet. Ooh, dun 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 Still, dun, still tell us about it. Well, we'll we'll see if it when it gets it goes when it gets, through. Yeah, when it goes through. Um, but I, I have something in the works, trying to trying to put something together. But uh, just waiting to hear back. We're gonna be on Oprah. <laughs> <laughs> but um, 
And also, I mean, Kyle's busy. Paul already kind of started it. No, but Kyle, Kyle's in a fuck over. <laughs> <laughs> We we do have people that we should kind of shout out. I mean, Peter and Ricky Pino, yes, who own absolutely. and operate PPRN, yep. they brought us in. Uh, been very good to us. Appreciate everything. Yes, yeah, so and make sure you tune in every every Tuesday and Thursday night to the the Peter Pino show on the PPRN Radio Network. We well, uh, toast to Peter because he has some good news today, right? Doesn't he? He he's already announced it on his oh, show. Right, good for him then. <laughs> oh, I, but, didn't, uh, I didn't hear it. Oh, did you really not? No, he was what? in the group chat. What group chat? Keep it going. I, I got to the bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, there, there are people. I mean, wait. What's the good news? He he got a new job. Oh, good for you, Peter. Um, he's going to Vegas for a month. Yeah. Wait, that wasn't. Well, the, he was in our group. No, right? no, no. no. Oh. Jeff mentioned it. But uh, I'm so fucking confused. <laughs> there, there is <laughs> other people. Shows. <laughs> I mean, uh, you know, along the way, we've met a lot of awesome people. Dope. Um, he said it wrong. We've yes. gotten we've gotten a chance to go to a place. I mean, we we want to thank Black Hog Brewing. Thimble Island, Cliffside, which was our first remote show. Um, most recently, Litchfield Distillery, Bad Fisherman, and um, you know, shout out. We already said Greg Houston, GDH, let us use his space for a while. Sally and Lincoln Reed letting us use their basement <laughs> for a while. But um, you know, any guests that's come down, I remember we had Phil, we had Sea Town, Massey started as a guest, Uncle Bob, Uncle Bob, Peter Dave Sanderson, Peter, yeah, Dave, my dad, your dad, <laughs> forgot about that. Yep. Um, Pat Donovan. Yep. Shane. Shane. But uh, again, you know, Rita puts everything together behind the scenes. Yes, there's no, there's no thanks enough for Rita. You know, we we should honor and and you know we, we take this Chaz and AJ sticker. <laughs> we, we bust her balls or or her ovaries as <laughs> as often as possible. But like we said before, you know, none, none of this is possible without her. And um, she she's due. She, she's due her she, she she's due a, her rewards, and she's due ninety nine more bullshit shows. She wants this show to end that's, so bad. <laughs> that's what you've won. We're gonna keep but going yes. for another hour. Download the PPRN app. Check out the Peter Pino show tomorrow night. Uh, I know going forward, I think starting in June, it's only going to be on Tuesday nights from seven thirty to ten thirty ish. Check it out. You'll have uh, mixtape Saturday. Mixtape Saturday, but you'll have our guy uh, K Reed running the board for Peter yes, Pino. Oh, you're not the Red Baron on Tuesdays. <laughs> I could be. I mean, every so often they mention me. How about this? How about you just start being a full time Sheldon Cooper? <laughs> Who's that? You know exactly. Who you that is. know who that is. Sheldon. There have been too many things that have ended this month for me. Yeah, Big Bang Theory was rough. I haven't seen it. I actually here's oh, the thing. I that started, dude. I yeah. started hating the Big Bang Theory because it got boring. But then Bob Souls watches it a lot, so I watched a lot with him. It's good. Uh, yeah, it's it is. Show. That I mean, ended. It's, it's good, but like burn it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all, all about. Real quick, that. let's get off air here. <laughs> that Game of Thrones Endgame. All but, um, hold on. There's just a lot more ventures to be made. No, there's not. There's only one more that has to do with this plot. But anyway, that's that's so irrelevant. <laughs> but again, tune into the we, fourth like hour. We, we like we talking. said, like Mock said, you know, obviously big thanks to our our core six group of guys here. You know, we're we're sorry Jeff couldn't be here. New job. It's been it's been trying for him. But our core group of six here, it's been absolutely amazing throughout a hundred shows. Mass, we know you started off as a guest, but you're more family than anything else, and you've contributed to this show just as much as the rest of us. Rita, absolutely amazing. All of our guests, all of our sponsors that we've Has had. Has liked the, our Facebook page yet? Probably not. <laughs> you know, it's Kyle. Um, but okay. I hope we're drinking his champagne. That you, you know, are. Kyle shares posts from our Facebook page all the time, but he shares them exclusively with me, so I no one else that. can use them. <laughs> <laughs> For a long time, Kyle was like, hey, Paul, watch this specific episode. Kyle, I was on that episode. <laughs> Share it with other people. What? Well, I didn't know it was <laughs> like, only to you. At like time. I said, Rita, again, you know, not enough thanks to give in, and all the guests, all the shows, that we, the, uh, the people we've had on the show, but, but most importantly, uh, as well, anybody who's ever listened to a show. Yes, thank whether you. you. Whether you've listened to 100 or you've listened to one, you're just as important as all of us. Without you guys, this is pointless. You guys rock. We thank you so much. We thank all of you who took part in our, our t-shirt program during our, our 100 show reign. Uh, everybody who's casted a vote in the Twitter polls, everybody who's commented on Facebook, you know, all those, all those things are all important. We appreciate everything you guys do for us. Um, we look forward most of all though, to you assholes listening to show one Oh one next Monday. 
from 8-ish to 11-ish. Until then, I'm your host, Cupcake the Riddler. I'm Mark. Sheen Washable. Yep. I am the man of many names. The Mask Chris oh. Massey. And I'm the Red Baron. No! no.